scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Father, bless us tonight. Open our eyes in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Tonight's teaching is, is um, really all the teachings that have been coming are preparing us. There is a mighty, there is a series I look forward to starting. But all of the series that have been coming on faith and all of these things, they are, they are preparatory teachings. Hallelujah. I told us that this year, I want, my goal is that our lives will be so impactful so impactful in every area hallelujah that in this year you will carry the anointing of the spirit in a way you have never carried this year you will carry the wisdom of the spirit that there will be a testament in your life that the rain is falling hallelujah and to do that we must be guided through strategic teachings strategic teachings now teachings are like like paint brushes you are able to the artist before a painting happens on a on the whole board and all of that the artist already has an idea of what he wants but he needs the medium of the brush and the colors and he begins to play out what is in his mind there is there is something in the mind of god for you in 2015 hallelujah and i'm just like an artist walking in partnership with the holy spirit to make sure that the exact picture that is in the mind of our father will be made manifest in our life this year in the name of jesus christ so tonight's teaching is really going to challenge us um, and help us to be better people more effective in every sense in the name of Jesus Christ our status is changing it's no more decline we're on our way to better day status is changing it's no more decline we're on our way to better day. Prophesy, that's what is happening to us in the spirit. Status is changing. Slow more time. We're on our way. Turn to your neighbor and prophesy. Tell him my status is shifting. Status is changing. Listen, 
listen to me there is nobody who ever won the olympics by mistake are you getting me those illusions do not exist every dimension of success be it spiritual be it financial in every sense is strategic and intentional hallelujah nobody 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 there is no successful person who cannot show you the formula who cannot show you the pathway he followed hallelujah you may not you may not see the full picture right now but brothers and sisters let me tell you it will not take long there is a kind of grace that when you sit under it implicates you it will not take long something will burst open it's like you are blowing a balloon you know how you keep blowing a balloon a time comes it doesn't matter what it is it just cannot take it and i perceive in my spirit that we're getting to that point i've been singing this song it's not a special number sometimes some songs help you articulate seasons 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 hallelujah i sleep with this song i wake up with it is my prayer and i know that there are certain people some mantles have long waited for you you see and and there are there are shoes that many of us will step into you will be amazed i hope you know that i'm not a politician when i stand to speak i'm not this is not a manifesto this is a communication of what the spirit is saying there are certain levels of graces that people will step into just know this brothers and sisters there is no mistake about success at any level there is no mistake there is no mistake hallelujah praise the lord please pray in one minute and say lord no distraction tonight give me such an unusual ability to listen an unusual ability to be focused inside and outside even if you have to sit on the fence even if you have to stand don't worry just pay your price now only a foolish athlete complains during the times of discipline only a failure looks for comfort during the time of training the bible says there's no man that worried who will entangle himself with civilian affairs humble yourself and submit yourself to the dealings of the spirit and see how mighty you will become i don't care what the limitations are take your eyes away from them hallelujah now i want you to sing this song as a prophecy sing it to yourself i'm on my way listen nobody in your family may have crossed that line before but as far as you know god is leading you there is a path it says there is a path which no foul knoweth. the whelps of the lion has not gotten there some of you as ordinary as you look just let the word of god finish its course in your life i'm on my way on my way i'm on my way to better day what the failure has been no matter what the limitations are prophesy challenge your fears I'm on my way on my way on my way I'm on my way Let me talk to you the man who wrote this song do you know how the song came about he was blind are you hearing me he was blind and one time a doctor looked at him and said this is your condition i can do something about it and he was surprised you mean my eyes can open 
and he began to pray and talk to the Lord and the Holy Spirit told him the meaning of that is that your status is about to change yeah that's how he wrote the song he was not just a musician that so this can change that once upon a time everybody looks at you in your family and thinks you are just one of those bunch of failures but you come up from another root that no man has seen and you tell them I may look small now but there is a hand that is holding me I may have made all kinds of mistakes in the past it's easy to judge me by my mistakes of the past but there is a hand holding me it's true that Jesus died but he only died for three days he didn't die forever while others were talking about his death he had already resurrected status is changing there's no more decline I'm on my way to that the doors that refuse to open to you must open in this season no more decline Father, in the name of Jesus, take us higher. We are praying this from the depths of our heart. Take every one person from glory to glory, from grace to grace, from grace to grace, from grace to grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm led to lead you in just one prayer. Say, Lord, make me successful. I don't know if you've ever prayed that prayer. Pray it, not for your neighbor. Just say it, make me don't say i want to be successful that's not a wise prayer make me please just pray whether you understand what i'm saying or not just follow what we're doing take your eyes away from what you are not take your eyes just say lord make me successful by every standard We're on our way, on our way. Hallelujah. 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 Seven years ago, I said this. These were my exact words. I said, We will all be successful. And the beautiful part is that we will all know ourselves. Seven years ago. I said this and I have not stopped saying it. This is a revolution. You may not look like it. But let me tell you, don't play games with the Holy Spirit. Once he holds you, he will make a wonder. He turned the lives of ordinary men. Forget about what men are saying about you. My Bible is full of the archives of the faithfulness of god hallelujah some of us ladies may be standing here you look weak you look like a failure forget about it just let my god the one that can pick a man from a donkey pick a man from a donkey one more time say lord make me successful against all odds kapala kataya when all is said and done i will be standing
some of you have been named like Jabez that all you've brought to those around you is sorrow but don't give up don't give up it doesn't take long in spite of the limitations I may not know what to do but I submit myself hallelujah hallelujah please be seated God bless you let's get to the business of tonight the training may be hard today but you will thank me tomorrow believe me this is it's not it's not a way that has just been discovered it's always been there but the road has been narrow because very few people care to follow it see I'm telling you listen to what I'm saying it doesn't matter what level you are now it doesn't matter what is wrong just pay attention to God give him time and see what he will make out of your life hallelujah tonight I'm teaching really more as a life coach if I would put it that way I want to talk to us about our lives and our destinies and I want to challenge us the focus of my communication tonight is to help us embrace transitions but then um, my talk is to everybody but my challenge mostly is to the men this night because you must be successful this year say amen. amen so before we start all the gentlemen rise aside from our elders properly sit down but every gentleman rise don't laugh rise we are not playing games please the teaching has started if you are not sure what you are stand up hallelujah Say after me in the name of Jesus. I will be successful. Regardless of where I am now. Regardless of what I do not know now. I make up my mind. That my world will celebrate me. I refuse to fail. It's a decision that I've made. I refuse to fail. I declare that my family my sphere of influence and God will be proud of me God bless you please sit down 1 Corinthians 13 verse 1 please everybody write especially the men whether you are standing even if you are sitting on a tree get a piece of paper this night and write you know I've told us when you come especially for those of us who are new please get a good notebook or something um, make sure you are writing one of the things that we have to come to terms with in life is the dynamic nature of life please listen carefully pay attention the dynamic nature of life life is in phases and at certain periods in our lives we are compelled to experience what we call transitions Everybody say transitions. Um, in, in biology or primary science, they teach about what we call the life cycle of insects, right? It starts from what? Egg, larva. Some of you got zero. You still will get zero today after many years. From egg, some of you are saying adult. How can it be that? Hmm? And so we see that there are what? Transitions. And at every stage, the rule is different. Hallelujah. At every stage, 
Now, for us humans, there are phases of transitions. You start from a, a baby when you are born down to that early stage of childhood, right? And then you get into teenage. And from teenage, people say young adult. I've, I've told you my position in those things. I don't believe an adult is anybody who is not a child. Whether you are young or old is irrelevant. Adults and from adults, it continues like that. And at the end of your life, you can now look back and see whether you spent your life impacting people or being a liability to humanity. So one of the challenges, watch this. And I truly thank God for giving me this paradigm as a person and giving us the opportunity to communicate this as a ministry. What I call a balanced growth. My obsession has always been to bring balance to the body of Christ, right? I attack violently any trace of imbalance in the body of Christ. Maybe it's because of the apostolic office, but I hate an exaggeration of truth and one dimension of life above and beyond the other, right? So I don't want to raise people who are spiritual, tongue-talking people, but are broke failures in life. And on the other hand, I don't want to raise people who will build houses, be mighty people, and go to hellfire. Are you getting me? I don't want a situation where all the brothers are praying in tongues, but every time when you are going to somebody's house to get married, the father looks at you and says, Young man, what is your name? Say, my name is, is Christian. Say, huh? What, what, what difference does that make? What are you here for? He say, I saw a flower. I say, you, a flower. Where? You know? But... There are essentials that if we do not address, you see, part of the spirit of leadership, not just being a man of God, leadership is to discern transitions and to bring relevant teachings that build people strategically according to the seasons of their lives. Are you following me now? If I go to a congregation where I'm talking to professionals, there is my approach, my examples, right? And my communications become different. If I'm teaching in a children's class, you can't sit down in a children's class and tell them about relationships and marriage and the rest. You are, you are spoiling those children. You are supposed to be teaching them how to press into God, you know, all of that. And you cannot be talking to, um, say, grand people of 70, 80 years. And you are talking to them and, you know, saying certain things. So, part of leadership and, and this is the entire scope of what we call in theology homiletics not just the art of teaching but the ability to communicate right we live in a generation where you must make sure that the questions you are trying to answer have been asked there are many preachers who are asked who are answering questions nobody is asking so while it is true that we must remain aligned with what the spirit is doing we must also be able to transit the body of christ the church is an institution right an institution is a platform that is able to mold people's mindsets and ideologies and part of the job of preachers is to be able to help the body of christ become successful and relevant even societally i was saying it in the leaders meeting and i said look my project this year, among other things, is to trust God that as this rain falls, rain cannot fall on a land and you don't see anything growing with time. Is that true? So that rain will fall on us in the name of Jesus. But then just, just prophesying and saying the name of Jesus be successful is a mirage. You've done it for years. Nothing happened. Success is not an impartation. There is nowhere in the Bible where you impart success. You can, you can receive impartation of wisdom. You can impart all of this. But the Bible says they are life to those who find them. Not to those who wish. Praise the Lord. Are we there? 13 verse 11. Not 1, 11. When I was a child. That means when I was at a season of my life called childhood. Are you following me now? Certain things happen in my life at that point. Number one. I did what? My conversations were childish. I spoke like a child. And, and nobody, you don't rebuke a child. If we call one of these our little ones now and comes up and we say, say something and he says, I want sweet. You can't flog him. He's speaking as a child. That is the reality within his age range. 
And it helps us know that the child is correct. If you call a little child and looks at you and says, where is my wife? Automatically, you know he has been watching nonsense. Either house helps or people have, 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 have raped his mind and transited him to realms that he's not supposed to have gotten there. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So, there are seasons I speak like a child. So, you know a child first by conversation. Second, I understood mindset i had the mentality of a child my understanding was childish some group of um some of my little children in this place they always come to hug me after service so they wrote me a letter they all came together wrote different letters and gave me and I made a mistake and I carried my big mouth and I said I was going to reply the letter. And these children will not let me rest. So today I decided to reply the letter and give them after the service. If you write me a letter and I don't reply it, you, you as an adult, you can't come and pin me. I tell you, look, my brother, the reality, but these ones don't care. They wrote you a letter and they don't care whether you are traveling to the world and back. If we tell them now, next week, all of you come here. You are going to... We are carrying you to where? A place where we we'll go and play. Or even Father Christmas or Father February or Father whatever is coming here. They will come dressed and happy. They don't want to know where you get the money from. They don't care. The cost dimension of life does not apply to them. They don't think cost. They only think reality. You told me you will buy me sweet. Whether you are stealing the money, whether the shop is open or not, where is my suite? You said you are buying me a car. Where is it? Even if he doesn't have food to eat at that point, he believes that a car is coming. So I understood like a child. Right? Number three, I thought like a child. So those things, are they characterize certain seasons. But then, the trouble with many people and especially young people, is that we do not realize that life does not remain at the same plane. Whether you are prepared or not, sooner or later transitions begin in our lives. Right? I'll never forget going somewhere and I saw a place that I used to go many years ago. I used to just go there and joke around and play and I said Jesus Christ, who would have known? That that little boy playing around. You see that? See the guys. See some of you touching your face and saying, This is beard. Am I joking? When did he? Welcome to transition. I remember, I remember when, I, when, I, when I was in secondary school. I think it was just one or two. They were these zealous guys that really wanted to start having mustache. They were so, they were excited about it. We had some people who were very hairy and then all of that. But then, these guys, you look like an insult. And you see them sit down and everybody trying to make his voice deep. How are you? And all of that. And now, <laughs> you still see people do it, Abby. All these boys, when they say, how far? They just try to make sure that they, they want to force themselves into certain seasons. But then you get to those seasons and you are tired and you wish. There are times that you go to Bab and you say, make sure he's... Um, a nice baby in this and make sure is the type that will attract the ladies but now when you go you say are you there as their baby they say what just just keep lowering you don't even know what you don't know what the name of the style you want just say start start whatever it looks like as you proceed i'll tell you whatever adjustments you make some of you even finish baby and they say cap say cap what difference does it make carving transition are you following me now? Now, whether you like it or not, you will come to the end of a phase in your life and demand will be placed to transit to another dimension. Are you getting what I'm saying? This is very, very important. Our inability to understand the laws of transition and the demands that we need to make will produce failures. You can succeed at a season in your life and transit and start failing at once. For instance, you can succeed as a child, saying foolish things and going scot-free. 
and then when you transit and forget you have grown what you said yesterday and people kept quiet you will say it tomorrow and they will slap you is that true because a transition has happened a mistake you made and god kept quiet as if he didn't see it you make it two years later you will pay for it dearly so our ability to understand transitions and the demands they bring is what i want to share very briefly there are five areas that we must focus on to be called successful in our lives never forget these five areas number one is your spiritual life the first area you must focus your spiritual life talks about your relationship with jesus christ your relationship with jesus christ your passion about the things of god your passion about the house of god your passion about spiritual activities your, your, your passion to know God and love him more. A season comes in your life where if you don't pay attention to your spiritual life, it will start messing up your life. Now, look at me. Our generation of young people, we thank God for what God is doing right now, but most of our parents did not focus on spiritual growth. What they focused on was academic or intellectual success. Is that true? So if I have a master's today, even if I'm drinking beer, I'm okay. Right? So if I come and meet this lady, come. I meet her and I say, I want to marry you. And they say, how is the guy? I say, he's nice. Is he working? Yes. Where? He's working with uh, civil defense. I say, wow, this is okay. He's nice, went to school, this and that. He drinks, but eh, just touches it once in a while. And so once, listen, that does not look like an issue. Every other thing was a very serious issue. Does he drink? Once in a while, smoking. I only saw him smoke once. Abba, it's okay now. It's better than how many people. And then, we are very happy. That person is called successful because he seems to have something doing. But I'm showing you, sit down, bless you, my dear, that you must focus on spiritual success. Is is a non-negotiable index to measure success and growth. Your relationship with Jesus Christ, your understanding of spiritual things. I will never, never in my life give my daughter to anybody who is not born again and filled with the Holy Spirit and serious with God with traceable evidences of transformation. Traceable. Traceable. You, you not... You can't, you can't say you love God and then we can't see the sign. God is not a, God is not a herbalist. You love God, you've walked with him, there must be a traceable evidence. Number two, finance. Everybody say finance. All the men say finance. Areas that you must focus on in your life if you mean business with success. I don't care how you pray in tongues, pray to the roof and come down. If you do not pay attention to your finance, it may not show now, but as transition happens, you will see the gravity of your not paying attention to it. Are you getting what I'm saying? Wealth. Finance defines wealth, abundance, financial freedom. Very important. I was talking to the leaders and I said, Kai, we need to do something about our brothers. Many of them love God but they are broke. It's not an insult. If we don't do that, other people will come and be carrying our ladies. Because when it's time to marry, God has said, move forward. There is a Red Sea in front of you. Right? The Red Sea. Is, and that Red Sea now is, is, is not Red Sea of demons. You have settled those ones. You left Egypt already. You left Egypt flawlessly. But right now, you are standing before a Red Sea. Praise the Lord. If you don't pay attention to your finances, you will be a failure in life. And I tell you this, I give it to you as a guarantee. Number three, family life. Many people learn family life as they get married. When things go wrong, he looks at the wife and says, what's going on? 
So what's going on? We are messing up. Say, really, what did you learn about family? Say, I didn't learn anything. I only got married. And unfortunately, the institutions that are supposed to build and equip people in this area are failing. Either as a result of negligence. I told you that the church is a school. The church is also an institution. Praise the Lord. There are many people who are getting married. They don't even know what they are doing. They don't understand the implication. Is that true? I was talking to some gentlemen and I said, guys, when do you want to get married? All of them said various dates and all of that. And I said, convince me that your home will not be a disaster. They made a lot of very intelligent statements. Okay, Jesus, they've handed over, the, or they'll hand over the family to Jesus Christ, which is good. Right? Which is good, but not all. Okay, they'll do something, get a job, good, but not all. Number three, don't forget that in family life, you are not living with animals. You are living with human beings who have a will. How many of you have roommates that you were praying that last session should end? Christians, you love God. You were so happy when you finished the last exam. The roommate said, I'm finally going. He said, I'm, I'm, I wish you a Merry Christmas. You've started wishing Christmas from 2nd of December. I wish you a Merry Christmas. In other words, get out of my room and my life. All of them. All the doors. Just leave. So if you do not understand the principles of human relations, what convinces you that because you saw a beautiful girl or a beautiful or a handsome guy? I like the guy. What of you? What do you think? Whether you like the lady or you like the guy, sooner or later, see, during relationship, a lot happens because it's just two of you. When you get married, relatives come in. Born again or not born again. Are you seeing now? Transition. So many other factors that you are not aware of coming. You get married to the man and all of a sudden, the man is yawning and pouring saliva. And you are saying, my Jesus Christ, my Prince Charming. I turned down 30 guys for this gentleman and what is this? The first shocker. Welcome to the reality of transitions. You may not have the opportunity to see that. Right? So, the, the trouble is not, I'm not, I don't have a problem with your success at this level because you have mastered the level. But when you transit, you will not use the old formula for the new level. Are you getting me? So, I want to share with you that you must know how to transit with life. Otherwise, you will be shocked. As a pastor, the way you pastor a church of 12 members, 14 members, is very different. When 50 members come, out of those 50, there's at least 4 or 5 wicked people. They are, they've been, your, your, your leadership style must be able to accommodate the mixed multitude that is coming. That means the way you do ministry for 12 people, I love them, I trust them, they are all, they will die for me. 50 people will not die for you, I guarantee you. Right? When 100 people come, your leadership style and your understanding must change. When a crowd comes, everything must change. Same thing. When you get a job, as a JJC, they just gave you a job, there is an approach. The moment they promote you, certain things are expected. Right? As a senior staff, there are some things you do that your corporation or whatever will not be able to take from you. Are you getting what I'm saying? When God began to transit Moses in the anointing, it was simple disobedience of striking a rock instead of speaking to it that stopped Moses from entering the promised land. To you, it may look like that, is, that was too hard a punishment, but compared to what standard? Are you getting me? Was it not Aaron and Miriam that said certain things and they were punished severely. Look at Zechariah, right? Zechariah said uh, this and that and that. He insulted Gabriel and they shut his mouth. The same Mary asked questions. How shall these things be? And the angel didn't rebuke her. He took time to explain because he was dealing with people at two different levels. Are you following what I'm saying? Family life. You can make or ruin the future of yourself and the people God will bring under your care 
if you do not understand the principles of family life. Number four, very quickly, your career or your professional life, you must pay attention to it or generally speaking, your assignment. You can pray in tongues. You can have a good home. If you're a liability in your workplace, you're a liability in your office, you're a liability in your corporation, they will check you out no matter what kind of tongues you are praying. Are you getting my point? So you must focus on the area of your career, the area of your professional life. Praise the Lord. And then your assignment, generally speaking. And the last area is the area of relationships and associations. Five areas you must pay attention to as you transit even in this season what's number one what's number two what's number three what's number four number five listen if you pay attention to all these areas and you succeed in them you will become a balanced person anointed wealthy right blessed with the gift of associations you can impact people you can leave a legacy this is what god wants for us and my job is to help us i don't want an imbalance where we are anointed we are casting out devils but then we are tied down financially or we are succeeding financially but we are on our way to hell right or our families and marriages are failing listen any pastor, any man of God that does not pay attention to these areas will have a chaos in his family. That's why God can never trust certain ministries with certain levels of people. Because we must sustain the ability to balance it. What good is it, listen to me, if stand up Zoe and Ken, assuming both of them are husband and wife. Huh? Husband, wife. How will you love a crowd of tongue-talking people who taught themselves in the morning at home? Wife comes wearing glasses because the man really injured her eyes that morning. And they came and you are full of all kinds of people. And you believe that you are rising but there's all kinds of fight happening everywhere. And you say, turn to your neighbor and you find out that people are not turning to their wives. They are turning to some other people. Right? A husband comes, he sits in front, his wife is down there, the children are somewhere there. They form a triangle in the church because they don't want to see any, they don't want to even come near themselves. You are a failed leader when that happens. Bless you, please sit down. Now, for some of us, like I said, some of the things that I'm teaching may not seem to make all the sense for us. Why? Because of the level that we are in life. I will be touching on some things that will challenge you. But the shock is that transitions are instant. That means you must prepare for a phase before you get there. You don't prepare when you get there because transitions are instant. One moment you write your final exam and you wake up to find out you are a graduate. Whether you believe it or not, you are. You dance and rejoice, but then a transition has occurred. Praise the Lord. You will be arguing, I want to marry Oh God, my husband must come. In the name of Jesus Christ, I, I smoke him out of everywhere he is. He must come to me. All kinds of prayers, we apply different skills to, to force breakthroughs into our lives. Now the man comes and before you know it, you have become a wife. And you check and find out that it's six months. You are tired of cooking. Oh God, what is this? You did not brace up for the transition. You were more excited about the motions. You were more excited about living singleness than being a wife. You were more excited about wearing a ring than sustaining a good family. Two months into your wedding, you are tired. That's why you see people slap one another and they are tired. Are you doing no? Are you doing no? Well, let's go. There must be an understanding. And then, there are many Christians, and some of you who work, and I'm, I'm sure our daddy prof here will testify, and many other people. Many Christians fail fail in their professional lives. Is that true? They are the ones they downsize. They are the ones they sack. They are the ones who are ineffective. They are the ones who are always doing the wrong things. You give them a paper to present, they make a, a, a mess of it because they don't prepare. They are waiting for the Holy Ghost to prepare the paper and they come up, is it your turn? Yes. And they come and make a mess of nonsense. 
And then we get angry. One of the worst problems of Africa is the belief that our problems are entirely demonic. It's one of the worst things that has happened to the continent of Africa. An easy explanation to failure. Praise the Lord. So your boss looks at you and queries you. And he said, while he was talking, I saw a spirit behind him. As if what he was saying was a lie. You have been ineffective. They now call you in a board meeting and say, Mr. Man, we have all seen what you have done. We want to promote you, but it doesn't look like you have been effective. Praise the Lord. Very important. How many Christians have given God an opportunity to bless them and increase them? How many Christians are CEOs of multi-million and multi-billion dollar corporations? Very few. Because many Christians embrace an average life and we are happy about it. It's God speaking to us. And we keep talking and say they made an unbeliever the CEO. You will stand side by side with that person and you will not be able to deliver in, in even if the standards were lowered. Praise the Lord. Am I challenging us? How many Christian students pass WAEC? Let's be very sincere. How many Christian students pass JAM? People play around and then two days to the exam, they are just smiling around. How many Christian young people get employed one or two years after graduation? Because the biggest problem with Africa is the transfer of blames to demons. You can't sue demons to court. You can't summon them before a judge. So, we, we do not concentrate on our assignments and on our, on our professional lives. How many men of God are able to deliver? They call and say, Lord, bring a crowd. They, they understand nothing about leadership principles. They think all there is is the ability to lay hands. No, sir. No, sir. Organizational skills, zero. Leadership skills, zero. Communication skills, zero. Right? Crisis management skills, zero. And now you want God to give you a crowd. You want to go on air. Is God speaking to us? And then our relationships and associations. People skills. If you fail in these five areas in life, then you are truly a failure. I don't care whether you got first class in school. If your spiritual life is dead and all other areas are dead, I guarantee you life will whip you in a way that you will be shocked. And I want us to be successful. Status is changing. It's no more decline. You're on your way to better death. It's not magical. It's a process. Status is changing. It's no more decline. On my way to better death. Please write very quickly. Why many people are failures or mediocres in life. Right. Why? The reasons. Reasons why many people, especially young people, end up being failures and mediocres in life. There is a reason. There is a reason why many people end up being failures. They go to school, they give their best, they graduate, they do everything, and then they step out of life with a lot of expectancy. Just like there are some of us seated here right now. We are angry at life because what they told you is not what you are seeing. I don't have a job. There's nothing happening. Every lady I go to, I want to marry you. She says, I'm sorry. Why are you sorry? Why are you sorry? Am I dead? Am I not alive? He said, you are living, but it's like you are dead. Number one, and this is where I want to get our attention now. Gentlemen, pay attention. No pinching around. Be very serious. Number one is mindsets. The first reason why people become failures or mediocres in life is their mindset. Everybody say mindset. Lack of mental transition. Lack of mental transition. They are growing older 
but their minds are not transiting with the new seasons to understand the demands the responsibilities lack of mental transition first corinthians 13 verse 11 said when i was a child spoke like a child understood like a child and he said i thought like a child but then he said something he said now that i am a man what happened he said i lay aside i throw away childish things so many of us have become men and women but we have still embraced the mindset that you had when you were 11 years old is that true so although you are married you are finding out that you are a big child there is a lot of childishness happening in your office you are seeing childishness that inability to transit mentally to match the transition that is happening in your life mindsets and there are three aspects we we'll deal with under mindset number one is dependency mentality dependency mentality oh god is speaking to us if you pay attention to what i'm saying the rain will fall on you truly dependency mentality everyone say it one more time dependency mentality because although it is scriptural can i have one gentleman come my brother if this guy is my son watch this if this guy is my son i have a scriptural injunction right as a father to take care of him is that true to take care of him to make sure that he eats well make sure he loves god and all the responsibilities but as the transition begins to occur in his life this child is now becoming an adult is that true that means that there must be a transition but by the time this gentleman is 30 years 25 years and he's still having a dependency mentality that's why we have so many men they are married but their mothers and fathers tell them everything to do because they the transition happened but in their minds they didn't transit are you getting what i'm saying mommy what do i cook for him today he say what did you cook yesterday say say mom say oh yeah try gary today see that so that inability to stand to an extent brothers and sisters there are many people who get married and they create a room for them in their parents house i'm not talking of a large compound with many houses because the man cannot do anything mommy prepares a room for him he now carries his wife later on the wife is pregnant she gives birth and they are all here it's a terrible thing it's a cause are you hearing what i'm saying so dependency mentality they were giving you pocket money maybe five thousand ten thousand per month and now you graduate and five years after graduation you start frowning at your father he doesn't understand why the bad look has happened because he expected that you would have realized they gave you scholarship you were blowing it buying books buying uh, buying boots buying trainers buying everything after all my father he gave birth to me right and now you are finished and your father says um i think you should be considering moving say moving to where is it not you who is supposed to build a house for me the bible says this and that and that and that shame on many young people because although they are old we are quick to look for women but very slow to transit you see a lady ah i like this lady and where are you? what are your plans that transition dependency mentality hallelujah to an extent that you see a young man some of you are looking at me as i'm talking to you now you are in this category you are seated and you get up shamefully very shamefully and you call your old parents from their pension and you say popsy yeah can you transfer something to me and he says okay things are not going on i says it's always like that you're always and you caught the call and you are raking and your mediocre friends are massaging you say calm down please calm down calm down you know old people with this their thing and your mother is crying on phone at home and say my son it's not like i don't love you what is all that eh? it's not even this and that and that and that i beg jare send me some money and then they go and borrow money and as old as you are they send money you use ten thousand to buy cake and celebrate 30 years and it doesn't occur to you 
that there is a transition. Is God speaking to us tonight? Oh, you must grow in the name of Jesus Christ. You may not like me now, but I will come to your homes and you will thank me for it. See, let me tell you, the person who loves you is the person who tells you the truth. It may challenge you, but it will make you a better person. Some of us, we have this over-dependence on everybody. Your father's first responsibility to, is to his wife, not you. To his wife, not you. Hallelujah. To an extent that there are many people who are, I know people who are working, but still want their parents to give them money. They are working, collecting salary, 100,000. They collect the salary and keep and say, Mommy, how far? Dependency mentality. You become a parasite to everybody. There are people who, everywhere you go, when they see you, you are tired. You call people, they say, well, he's not around. And he's the person you are looking for who is talking. He picks the phone and says, please, John is not around. He says, ah, are you not John? He says, ah, he's not around. He calls the call because there is a parasite mentality. Right? As a young man, you don't, learn, you don't want to learn how to cook and you don't want to be rich. A paradox. You want to go to the restaurant every time. And then you want to remain broke. If there's nothing there, learn how to cook. If you can't cook anything, learn rice, beans, swallow. It's a good start. It's a good start. Is God speaking to us, please? Take what I'm saying very seriously. Because if you don't, sooner or later, you will see that it will whip you seriously. I counsel a lot of people and when couples come, their number one problem is the inability. As I hear them speak, I still see children speaking. Because there is that, it has happened in church. But mentally, there is that dependency mentality. So the man looks at his wife and says, mommy. She looks at the husband and says, daddy. And then there is a mommy-daddy fight going on. Because everybody is depending on who. Why didn't you wake me? I need to be at the office by 7.30. Why didn't you wake me? Oh, guy, you are married. Your mother woke you when you were going to JS1. Five o'clock. That old woman will get up and put water for you and do everything and iron your clothes. You are married. To an extent that some of us are pests to our roommates, office mates. You never cook. You don't ever say anything about cooking. Bros, you don't do just step into people's rooms and when they see you coming they say lock the door lock the door this parasite is coming your life is not supposed to be that way hey, hey look hold on please i hope as we are laughing we are listening your life is not supposed to be like that a parasitic life everybody runs away from you because you have a dependency mentality you never have the opportunity to manage situations you have headache. You are running around expecting everybody to say, you, you see that? And, and the ugly part is when it happens for men. It makes, it's okay if it happens for women. But a matured man and another matured man, oh boy, sorry, oh, you have headache. What is that? Praise the Lord. The guy is not feeling fine. Who should tell you to get up and go to a clinic? It's not like there's no money. We are used to dependency mentality. Mommy, where are you? Come and take me to the hospital. You are 30 years. Dependency mentality. So that's what happens. When that kind of man gets married, his children can be sick and he will look at them like that because he's not used to taking responsibilities. Dependency. No food at home. Eh? So what? No food. That's it now. They sack a man from work. Ten years later, he has not gotten another job. And he doesn't care. He said, what happened? To you? you know the way Nigeria, railway corporation, that time we were working. Railway? I was working in Nitel. I was working in this. And he's qualified. The CVs are there. Ah, you hear me this night. Bless you, please. Mindsets. Dependency mentality. You must get out of it. 
do make up your mind not to be a pest and a parasite to anybody say i am a blessing not a parasite say it i am a blessing not a parasite when you were small when you visit your uncle once you are going they they carry smarties and conflicts and milk and bon vita. Now you go and meet them. They are old and you see that. You say, Uncle, I'm going. No, he said, May the Lord bless you. I had you. You are a graduate. Now, where did you even serve? I serve in Ondo. And immediately you finish. They say, Ah, so they gave you all those 20,000 allowances. Yeah, those things they gave us. And now you finish and you are eyeing your uncle. You are angry because you are expecting him to gather everything and give you. See, I'm not blaming you. I'm challenging it out of you. It does not live by default. You force it to go out. That mentality will never live because you are growing older. I'm telling you, you must make a conscious effort. I made up my mind that the last money I would ever collect from my father was when I was in 100 level. And that was it. I took responsibility over my life. There's no job. Why? In Nigeria now, all this federal government is not true. It's not true. What effort have you made? Dependency mentality. So you see students practice this. You give them assignments, they never do it. Right? They are always waiting for a night to submission. Have you seen people like that? And then they come at me, they say, how far? You know, we are fellow koinonia people. So what? They now bring it, you copy that dependency mentality is the root of malpractice. Because you are in the exam hall and you never believe. Please, let's be sincere. How many WIAC results in Nigeria are genuine? That the people, I'm not condemning. Are you getting my point? How many? I, I never knew they used to do Expo in Jam, but now there's nothing that doesn't happen. All kinds of skills. Expo here, shoes, any kind. You, we have the mindset to be able to innovate ways of cheating. Something is wrong. Hallelujah. Dependency mentality. So, people pair themselves when they are going to write exams. Please come and sit down. If you don't know, I help you. If I don't know, you help me. Question one, you don't know. Two, you don't know. Three, you don't know. The bonus, you don't know. You don't know anything there because a dependency mentality. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are many people who are angry with their parents right now. They may have failed in not being able to leave a possession for you. But let me tell you, if you sit down there, it's the same way your children will be angry with you. And say, did you have to marry? That's what your child will ask you one day. See, was it by force? Then you will flog him. Because that's exactly what happened to you when you asked that question. The second mentality on that mindset is the false comfort that comes with generalizing failure. The second mentality on that mindset, we are still talking about one, let's hurry up, is the false comfort, false, F-A-L-S-E, the false comfort that comes with generalizing failure. There are many people who become failures in life because they have found a way of generalizing failure. You know, the moment you generalize failure, have you seen people who fail and you ask them why? They say, ah, didn't you hear that there was mass failure? So, they now exit themselves and say, no, it's not unique to me. Oga, you've been earning 200,000. After five years, you don't have a plot of land. Say, are you, are you, are you, you don't know what is happening in Nigeria. There is a mindset that spreads failure so that you nicely come out of it. Are you getting what I'm saying? But you've not paid the school fees of two of your children. You are a worker. You say, eh, you know now, the way this whole thing is, eh, is this just us? It's not happening in your office. We, we generalize there is a consolation that comes when you tell people, especially Nigerians, that you are not the only one who failed. Is that true? There are many people like that. So a man of God is falling sick recurrently. Instead of him to go back to the world and find out, why am I not eating? He says, look, uh, you see, we are humans. So you spread the failure and it excuses your unique wrong. 
Are you getting what I'm saying? Is, is God speaking to us? So every time you fail, you look for somebody who failed just like you to derive comfort. Rather than settling down to say, no, no, I must have done something wrong. What did I do wrong? What steps can I make to fire back? Praise the Lord. That's the reason why we love witchcraft in Africa. Because it's a general thing. So when they come and say your whole family. Now I, I'm not, of course, you know we pray. Next week is miracle service. Right? There's a place to deal with that. But let me tell you, it's not everything in our lives that is tied to demons. Stop generalizing failure. There is, there is what you can know that will exempt you. Hallelujah. Say, I refuse to generalize failure. My Bible says when men say there is a casting down, what will be your testimony? Yes. See, for as long as you find pleasure in generalizing failure, you will never be great. There are pastors who will never rise to the challenge for their ministry to experience another level. General failure. They say, you know, there's crisis in the north. Yes, it's true that there's crisis in the north. But are you not seeing God doing exploits in the midst of it? You see, when you generalize failure, it makes you comfortable. Because you are now saying that it's not anything wrong that I did. It's, it's, it's something that affected all of us. Are you getting what I'm saying? I learned early in life to take responsibility for my failures. Why didn't you come? Why did you come late to come and decorate this thing? Am I the only one? Did you meet any other person? We all came late. You see, that's it. That's the point. Praise the Lord. Ha, ha, all of you, your family are not married. Yes, we are all like that. You are now happy. In spite of the unique role you play, your role of carelessness and shouting at every man, that has nothing to do with deliverance your own lack of understanding of submission you just rubbed it in the whole picture and say we are we are we are all we are all there's no marriage coming it's like that this is our family self that's why you find out that after prayers after healing after deliverance some people's situation never changes because the factor they've been trying to hide and generalize it is still there The comfort that comes with generalizing failure. Number three, let me hurry up. The third mindset is an entitlement mentality. Similar to what we call dependency mentality. An entitlement mentality is, is for me, in my opinion, this is the most poisonous of all mentalities because entitlement mentality is the belief that someone owes you something in life someone owes you making your success happen someone owes you making your life are you getting my point that that mentality the government owes me right my father is supposed to give me money i'm getting married my father should build a house for me buy a car it's my right that that entitlement mentality is a dangerous mentality the belief that someone else is responsible for your well-being the belief that somebody else is entirely responsible for your well-being is an entitlement mentality we blame parents for our failures we blame the government for our failures we blame a lot of external factors. Every time we are mentioning the things that make us fail, we never talk about ourselves. We never say our contribution to the equation. Hallelujah. Um, Elijah, why did you slap Shay? I slapped her because she has been playing with my intelligence. And this other guy who is supposed to talk didn't talk. I'm watching you. I'm coming for you. You see? We never say, look, I got this wrong. I'm not in a good relationship right now. I've entered 10 relationships. Nothing has worked. Probably there's something. 
there is my outlook about life. There is my perspective. Is ego stinging to come to a point where you accept? But that is the point of true liberty. Are you getting what I'm saying? I begged my father for car to go and greet her father with it. My father refused. My father only gave me the car. Wouldn't I be married by now? An entitlement mentality. I begged my father for jam money. He refused to give me. No, I've not written the jam. Let me fail, but I see if your destiny is in your father's hands. Please hear me, Koinonia. I'm speaking to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You must quit that, that entitlement mentality from today. Some of us have been sending insultive text messages to our loved ones. Insulting them and saying, I'm disappointed. I asked you for 5,000. You cannot even send it. Mommy, this is to let you know. I respect you as my mother, but I'm, I'm disappointed. Send. You are cursing yourself. People return back to their rooms and look at their roommates and they are frowning. Una no cook. Ah. You didn't bring ingredients. You didn't bring the food. You didn't buy kerosene. You didn't wash the plates. But there is an entitlement mentality. Something in you lies to you that the whole world is just about you. That's the entitlement mentality. Pastor Jake, I beg, I feel get something from you. He said, no, what for? And you're hungry. Entitlement. That's why you see in many churches, there are all kinds of people who wait for people to share testimony. Oh, God gave me three million and somebody's waiting for them immediately after the service. Say, well done, sir. Ah! Your testimony really touched me. You see, I hope there are no people who do that kind of thing here. So you are a pest to everybody around you. You are just waiting for people to succeed. And then they pay you like it's a right. Your success depends entirely on you and God. Never forget that. It's God speaking to us. I knew this early in life. And it has helped me. That belief that somebody will make you successful is devilish. Grow up tonight and get out of that mindset. Why are you not playing your keyboard very well? Eh, nobody bought keyboard for me now. Who will buy it? Why have you not risen to that dimension? Why have you not started the business? Where will I get the capital? Everybody I meet is not giving me. Who was assigned to give you? You know, the entitlement mentality is an ugly mentality. It makes you believe everything in the world is all about you. You carry your problems and distribute it. You just come. Have you seen people like that? They come and meet you. The guy talking is wearing trainers of 11,000. He's wearing stock jeans of over 6,000. Dressing well and he's saying, um, I just came to meet you, Kai. Food stuff has finished. As if it's what is a, it's a surprise to you. Shouldn't it finish? Are you not using it? food stuff has finished and you say um, so how can I help you now you say I need like 30 30 will do me look at he's, he's seeking help from somebody and he's coming with a childish right entitlement mentality there are some of us who and that's the danger the danger there is when somebody starts helping you it almost becomes like a right have you seen people that came to our homes or our families they were trained Parents took care of them at a point that entitlement mentality started. Have you seen people like that? Terrible thing. You see a man and his wife, maybe rain washed their house and they came to stay in your house for one month. Right? Very soon they start complaining. I've been watching the way madame is putting food for her husband. Ah. What did you expect? I noticed the way she puts food for my own husband. You are squatting in somebody's house. Entitlement mentality. My uncle gave me a job in this company. How can I be in this company? My uncle is there. And I'm not one of the directors. My uncle. Uncle Solomon. That grew up in our boys quarters. I cooked for him. So what? So what? You come late, 
they've put a circular in, in, your, in your reception desk. Resume work by 6.30. You come by 10. You've done that for 3 years. They didn't, they didn't promote you. Your uncle has done everything to lift you. And you are not cooperating. Yet entitlement mentality. How many people have we hated innocently in life? How many of our parents have we called witches and wizards because of entitlement mentality? To an extent, some of us can go somewhere and buy clothes and say they should go and meet your mother to collect the money or your father or your brother. I refuse that mentality. I refuse it. I refuse it. I refuse it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Is God speaking to us? Some of these things I'm saying, when it applies to you and it shoots at you like an arrow, just let it enter you because it will, it will refine you and it will make you as gold. Ladies and gentlemen, let me announce to you again that transition is here. Embrace it. Whether you like it or not. While I sat down, I think it was um, whether January or so, Miracle Service and they were the celebrants if your birthday is january come out and i saw a lot of people smiling and i said transition transition praise the lord whether you are prepared or not transition is here praise the lord my my sister did something that touched me today in the afternoon while i was just meditating i got an email from my sister and she sent me i i still want to do it i've been trying to do that on my phone but it's i wanted to show all of you i wanted us to project it here our old six massacre 2009 crusade crusade photo i really would love us to have that i think we can work i have it in my email eh? get me a laptop with internet and i'll transfer it to you. yes i want you to see it one day we'll come up. We have the video. I think we have the video of our 2007 crusade. You will see all of us there. You see Victor, the head of department of protocol. They all held firewood on their head. Hey, oh. That's what the song they were singing and jumping. Hey, oh. And you see us so lean, looking like, like whatever. Transitions. But here we are today. Ten years after now. We will look back. You will see the pictures of today. And you will smile. You will tell your daughter, that was me. Say, are you hearing? That was me. I was serving the Lord all my life. So don't think, is this lie that most of our parents lied to us? They said they were SU president. They were the best footballer in their school. They were best everything. Our own has proof. You can see it. And you can know. Praise the Lord. One last mentality mediocre mentality mediocre mentality mediocre mentality we are still talking about the reasons why people become failures and mediocres and I'm, I've just touched on number one medio mentalities, mindsets really mediocre mentality what is a mediocre mentality is the mindset that tells you impact, influence is carnal it's a mindset that is satisfied with being small, being quiet. The mindset of an average life. The belief, the fallacy that an average life is the greatest way to make heaven. It's a mediocre mentality. That mindset of being small. Have you had people like that? Me, all I want, God, just give me one small golf, one, two house, anywhere, whether in the bush or wherever, I'm grateful. Let me just have my two children. If we can eat food in the morning, even if it's once a day, God be praised. It's a mediocre mentality. No matter how spiritual you try to make it. There are churches like that. We are happy. We are a simple, nice family church. We are happy. This guy has been there for the past 10 years. We are there. We are not doing anything. We are not letting anybody know what God. We are happy. We are okay like that. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. 
There's an army rising up And they will break every chain Break every chain Break every chain Break every chain Kingdom advancement, kingdom advancement is tied to one word, influence. One word, influence. Without influence, there is no kingdom advancement. I want you to know that. When the church is quiet in a society, there is no influence and there is no advancement. The church in Nigeria is not quiet at all. That's why we are involved in everything in this country. The church, Nigeria is the most religious country in the whole world. And forget about the errors here and there. I tell you, the church in Nigeria is alive. We have a say in everything from the executive government. Everybody knows in Nigeria that you don't downplay the church and go scot free. Influence. I've studied revivals, I've studied um, technological revivals it was all tied to the church are you getting what i'm saying we need men and women of influence get my teaching conquering cosmos there i teach on what we call strategic apostolic invasion it's not just sharing tracks influence what is wrong if koinonia has 10 bank managers as, as your members you imagine that we call that influence where one person represents a nation influence influence are you getting what i'm saying please don't ever reject influence in your life because god wants to give it to you it was through influence jesus was able to advance the kingdom the bible says it was noised abroad that that celebrity was in town and he had the opportunity to teach and to heal and to deliver it says in in matthew chapter 5 it says you are the salt of the earth you add value you give meaning to the earth. You are not just a tongue talker. He calls you the salt of the earth. He calls you the light of the world. And he says you are a city. Not like a city. Not a village. You are a city. Hallelujah. I refuse to be small in my life. Nobody will preach me into being small. I rejected it long ago. I still reject it. Koinonia will not be small. Souls are saved because of the influence. Destinies are changed because of the influence. During the retreat, media people told us the targets that they want on Facebook and the rest. And I told them, go for it. We are going all the way for it. Let me tell you, this is not a small ministry. We are visionary people and we refuse to be small. And you will never be part of this vision and be small. I will challenge you. I will challenge you. Thank God for where you are. But we will not allow you to remain there. You must rise. Because there is coming a renaissance. There will be an emergence of people in every area. Hallelujah. It was a mirage. In Nigeria, if one person owned a television station, is that true? Television station. I remember that time you own a television station, they tell you every kind of thing. And God said, Come on, where are those apostles? And men and women started rising. 2005, the Lord revealed to me that there will be 37 Christian stations in Nigeria. And today, how many lives have been blessed through the power of the media? Are you getting what I'm saying? All the technological gurus and the rest. Imagine you making a, a laptop that the, it must not mention Jesus. But imagine that you put it on and, and the sound for it to start is a deep worship song. Whether you like it or not, you must buy it. Hallelujah. Praise God. You must make your presence known. Is the, is, the, is, is the principle of dominion. Part of dominion is to make your presence known in a territory. Then they will adopt your ideologies. Then they will embrace your convictions. If there are, if there are hundred millionaires, I'm not talking of one million. 
real millionaires in this place, I guarantee you, your spheres of influence were. I, something happened. I think um, I went, one of our ladies here, she's, she's technically my account officer with one of the banks. And, um, and uh, we're going, she had been forcing me to come and collect my card. My card had expired. And she was forcing me to come and collect the card. She said I should get back into banking with them and all of that. And then eventually I went. She had prepared everything. When I got there, she was greeting me. Her superior was just looking at me. Who is this guy? And before I know it, I saw one Koinonia member coming again. And then one other lady coming to greet. I said, that's right. This is the kind of testimony we want to be seeing. When they came and they were greeting, ah, the man squared up and said, oh, well done, sir. I told him, I said, this, this lady is the one who is forcing me to come to this bank. Look at her. See that? What does that mean? Promote her and lift her because she's doing a good job. The influence of the kingdom. I don't know who taught you that mediocrity brings glory to God. I want you to know that the more you have results, the more your words become powerful. Results add weight to your words. Results Refuse a mediocre mentality. Refuse it. Hallelujah. Refuse it. Pastor Jake's in his place of work within a short time. When he was announcing his, his promotion and his lifting, I smiled. I said, Those guys, those guys, come on now. Physical competence, the anointing, wisdom, grace, everything combined. You can't be small. Shout it, I refuse to be small. Say it, I refuse to be small. Please, I'm challenging you. Thank God for the photocopying business, but don't die there. Start small, but I'd like you to see beyond. Who is God speaking to? I'd like you to see beyond. Refuse to be small. The influence of the kingdom is the key to strategic apostolic invasion. Michael Jackson is long dead. But last year alone, his album made 150 million US dollars. In fact, when he died, three days after his death, they made 120 million dollars at his death. The man who feeds you is the one you will listen to. Is that not true? For as long as the world system keeps feeding us, we will be forced to listen to them. But I tell you, there is an army. Ha! There's an army rising up. This is why we are teaching these teachings. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. They will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Sing one more time. There's an army, there's an army rising. Things will not continue to be this way, I tell you. There's an army rising up to break every chain. To break every chain. It is not the will of God for you to be small. It does not glorify God in any way when you are small. John 15, I think from verse 8 when you read down, it says, Herein is our Father glorified. When ye bear much fruit, much fruit, not little fruit, much fruit, much fruit. Look, I'm not talking of some carnal, fleshly wanting to make it in life. I'm talking of lifting with an assignment. Influence that is intentional as a means to an end. It makes your words powerful. You are able to speak. 
Hallelujah. That's why we must speak into your life. Oh, you will get the oil company job. That devil will not stop you. The, the, no, there are the principles. You will get it. You will be wealthy. You will be blessed. The devil will be alive to see it. I will never raise a poor congregation. Never raise a weak congregation. A weak congregation produces a weak man of God. A weak ministry that has no voice. I will never let anybody watch me on TV and scroll and say next. This useless man, part of the noisemakers. No. That when you listen, you say, this is it. I had one word and it changed me. Makala boko superiata. You must embrace the influence of the kingdom. I don't know what you have been taught, but you must change your mind. We have small parents, innocent but small, small families, small everything, small. I got my small degree. I read my thing. I don't even want anything. Let me just get. I got one teaching in one LEA school. I'm okay. Seven thousand is enough. What am I looking for in this life? Stop that. Stop that kind of devilish thinking. Remember, let me always balance this. I'm not talking of this carnal, lustful affinity for the things of the world. I'm talking of gaining kingdom influence with the exact intention. Right? The exact intention to bring the glory and the kingdom of God. There was a time Jesus came in the city and he stole the show from all the scribes and Pharisees. The guys were angry. They said they are not listening to us again. Ah, uh -uh, what happened? Look, let me tell you, Koinonia, we are a city. We are a city. You are not a village. You are not small. I separate you from that small mindset. You may be in a small room now. Think big. You may be in a small hut now. No problem. Soak the gari, but see the world. There is much to do for the kingdom. God has increased and expanded our influence through the teachings and through the meetings that we've got. And we have seen more souls. Look at the gentleman. Where is that guy that came that shared his testimony? Oh, he's outside. Oh, look at that's the gentleman. All the way. We call it kingdom influence. How many people claim they saw Jesus and he said the words he gave them, he said they should take it out of the earth. But they are poor and broke. It has not come out. Not even everybody in the city knows. And it's not that they had a wrong encounter. Hallelujah. Influence. Influence. You must embrace it in the name of Jesus. Say, I refuse to be small. Say it, I refuse to be small. Challenge yourself, I refuse to be small. The second reason why young people become failures. My spirit is fired up. We are going to pray. The second reason. I told you the first is the mindset. Second reason is laziness. Laziness. You're my treasure, my priority. Who can compare to you? Great is the match of your royalty. Oh, morning star, you truly. So laziness, everybody say laziness. The second reason why people become failures in life is laziness. There is this spirit of laziness that is upon many Nigerians, upon many young people, an inertia, a reluctance to move forward, inactivity, satisfied with their levels. Closely tied to laziness, is the spirit of procrastination. I will do it another day. Oh, I will do it. 
Is it not savings? I will save the money. Is it I will do it? I will do it. Procrastination is a dangerous spirit. Pray for your destiny. I will pray. Settle down. Begin to study in the unique area God has called you. Man of God, study about church growth. I will study one day until all your members leave. And then you start getting angry at everybody. All these people, are you sure they didn't touch their hand? Go and touch it too if it's available like that. Hallelujah. Laziness. There are many lazy people in Nigeria. And the Bible talks a lot about laziness. The Bible talks about laziness. The moment you are lazy, get set to beg. You have signed an agreement with begging, no matter who you are. And I have found something with lazy people hate begging. They hate begging. They feel embarrassed. Don't worry, just bring it, bring it, bring it. I'll do it fast. Lazy people hate begging. Hallelujah. Sorry for the little distraction. Let's pray. Pray in tongues while I do this. Is that all right? All right, so go ahead and pray. Pray in tongues very quickly so that it will sink. It will sink down. Your word is producing results in my life. Sheba kapa para da bala da bos, imbrotos kubre di gale bara da da bos, seke te bara da 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 bos. Raba ba kubre di gale bala da bos. Hallelujah. Laziness. There are many of us who are lazy. Look at me. When it is time to sit down, you sit down. But if it is time to get up and act, huh? when there is an anointing for something, you stand up and act. There are many people that if you took action when God spoke to you, you would have built the house by now. There are many people, if you took action, you would have gotten that job action laziness i would do it no unfortunately time does not wait for everybody and if you want to wait until everything is right you will never move in your life the bible says he that considers the weather will never sow and as a result will never reap hallelujah laziness inaction procrastination that inertia refusal to move forward you are sitting in your room. Somebody just sows a thousand naira and the Lord says, get up and go to Jordan bookstore. I gave you that money because there is a book I want you to buy. He said, eh, no problem. You sit with that money immediately. You sit before you know it. You have spent 200 naira from it. See that? Before you know it, you finish the money. You just sit down there. Let me tell you one way the devil kills people. Sleep. I know God gives sleep, but Satan can also give sleep. Sleep. This sleep. It looks little. I was teaching the school of ministry students and I told them, if you sleep 8 hours a day when you are 30 years, you've slept for how long? You've slept for 10 years of your life. Exactly. By the time you are 30 years, just know that you are in reality 20 years because the whole 10 years went into sleeping. 
you sleep from 8 o'clock. You wake up. Round one waking is around 4. You just wake up and check if there's any Nigerian film around. When there is none, you lie down. You wake up around 9. That's the second phase of, of the waking up. It's not like you sleep marathon. You wake up, just browse around, and then maybe you plug water for bathing and get back to sleep. Before you know it is one o'clock, you just yawn and stand up and you sit down, you are lazy as a guy, sleep. You will be poor, guaranteed. Please, brothers and sisters, hear me. Love not sleep too much. It will rob you of the anointing. I, I don't know any man who carries two anointing who loves sleep. No. No, sir. No, sir. I've been awake today since at about, I think maybe 2.30 or 3. God is my witness. I've been awake. And as I go back now, it's not like I'm going to go and jump on my bed and start sleeping. No. What is your concept of success? Look, success is not cheap. It's not for children. T.D. Jakes wrote a book, Can You Stand to Be Blessed? It takes stamina to be distinguished. So for those of us who think the anointing comes and you just lie down and sleep and snore away your life and wake up and find yourself successful, you are joking. Wake up. Sleep. Huh? you lie down and sleep it brings a lot of things forgetfulness you are 30 years you forget about everything somebody says I'm coming he comes now and says why are you here he says, I said I'm coming say, oh I remember he said, but you are too young for that unnecessary sleep when the night time when you should wake up and study and pray some of us people can be gisting they can even lie down your bed and wake up. You didn't know that anybody lay down there. Because you sleep and, and the sleep is so deep. You wake up and you are frowning. Ah, why did you wake me? It's a bad attitude. I know you won't like me. I will still say it. I love you too much to leave you that way. Especially for the gentlemen. Please love not sleep. If you find yourself sleeping around, just, just imagine money disappearing from your life one two anointing disappearing from your life wake up don't you know there is the mystery of the night time look at the prophets in the bible look at men look job said um, i mean the psalmist said in the night time during his time of meditation when things are revealed to him the night time is when great men get insights is the time where men of power travel in the spirit okay it's, it's, it's true that you are tired at least three four or so wake up don't let your body cheat you you need to drag it and say no way i refuse to let my flesh make me a failure in life who is god speaking to there are certain people even five o'clock waking up in the morning that families used to do, you know that thing they do, five o'clock. You wake up, you carry your Bible, drop on your bed and sleep on it. Somebody will come and see you and think you are on, on that deep med. Who are you cheating? Who are you lying to? When you see somebody, please don't play that kind of expensive game with your destiny. I'm not telling you not to sleep. There are times I take out time to rest. But brothers and sisters, if you must be great, there is a price. Please hear me, Koinonia. There is a price. Hallelujah. So laziness, we must walk on it. Laziness. Kill procrastination from your life. There are some things God has told you people to do. God told you to sow a seed. I will do it tomorrow. God told you to get up and read on leadership. I will do it tomorrow. Do it now. Do it immediately. Number three, fear. The reason why many people become failures and become mediocre in life. Fear. Fear. Fear of failure. Fear of being embarrassed. Not just failure, but fear of repeated failure. It's true that failure is embarrassing. It's true that failure is lashing, is ego stinging. 
but it is in your failure that you find the door to true victory please hear what i'm saying and take it seriously fear of being seen as a failure is that not what is responsible for our fake lives right you go and borrow a shoe of 20,000 naira and you wear and say this shoe 20,000 naira is it your own no because you don't want to fail people borrow phones i beg i just want to stroll to ribadu can you help me with your phone what for you borrow watch borrow clothes borrow phone borrow everything borrow mindset borrow everything and in the end of it you find out that there is no authentic life i've told us again and again in koinonia stop trying to look successful pay the price and be successful That's why we don't discriminate anybody here. I don't want to know who you are or who your father is in terms of maybe preference and all of that. I treat everybody with honor and dignity because I believe everybody can be everything if you get the word. Hallelujah. Fear of failure. Look at me. Why didn't you start the business? Failure made you to give a lot of excuses. Why didn't you go and apply for the job? I've not served. Do they take people who have not served? Did you go? Did you go? You see, ba, look at me. Many of us write a lot of prayer requests. Next week now, there will be another one. I, I, you know, I kneel down to prayer and I see it. Some of you is full scab. You write it and then you write, uh, please turn over. That means it has not finished. Oh, there's still some more. But the issue is that... Do you really believe that as the anointing comes on it, you will need to take action? You see why I've been teaching us on faith. Faith in one word is obedience. Action. I refuse fear. Is it because people will talk about you? Fail and see whether people won't talk about you. What you are running away from will come. Whether through the door of success or failure, it will still come. The greatest way to reply critics is massive success. Continue your results. Let the result keep speaking. You wrote jam. You didn't pass. So what? Why don't you write again? Are you hearing what I'm saying, please? Fear. Nigerians can fear. And many of us, that fear makes us to give ourselves excuses. I'm young. Please, there's time for everything. When is the time? I'm young. He told Jeremiah, do not say I am a child. Don't say I'm a child. Don't say I'm a child. Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett, the, the CEO of Berkshire Hathaway. One of the top three wealthiest people in the world. He was asked a question that um, was the greatest mistake he made in his life. And he said he started investing at a um, very late. What is the late? Eight years old. Eight years old. Sila. Think about what I just said. There are people to start training and building their children. They say it's too small. Do you know there are some of you? If you talk to your parents about finances as you are now, they'll say, "What are you? What are you talking about it for?" It's, it's an innocent mindset, but it's poisonous. So they tell you, don't worry. Ah, why, why are you rushing? And then before you know it, you now have to face life by yourself and you make a lot of blunders. Say, I refuse fear. Say it, I refuse fear. There are two kinds of fear. Fear of trying and fear that comes as a result of the memory of your past failure. Some people have refused to get into relationships. The last one didn't work. Who said all will not work? You have made adjustments. I remember I went to minister somewhere and I gave a woman a word. I told her, I said, Madam, um, I see that something happened in your home, but I'm seeing you marrying again. No, ah! no please, oh, my children, it's okay. I said, ah, Madam, what's the issue? I'm just telling you what God is telling me that a man is going to come ask your hand in marriage and you'll be gloriously said, say me, marry a man, me, men, look at my children, me, men. The woman was saying, I said, madam, I'm a man, oh, please, this one that you are talking about, men, I said, it's not every man that, everybody, blah, 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 blah. The woman started crying, I said, madam, God is bringing a good, 
Okay, you know how women talk. Okay, well, let's see. Fear. Fear. That's what has stopped some of us from being champion. You are used to failing. The day you succeeded and they told you you succeeded, it says a lie. Don't play games with me. Don't you know that the divine life, part of the blessings of the divine life, is a life of success. No matter how you have failed in life, hear me, I want you to believe that you can come back alive. Are you hearing me? Say, I refuse to fear. Say it, I refuse to fear. See, there is a, there is an, let me, let me use this slang, there is an, I don't send mentality, you have to give life and give people if you want to make it. Some of us are too careful. What will, what will Zuerar say now? What will mom, we are too careful. That, that, that excessive care is not, is not care unto faith. It's care unto doubt and it will kill you. There are people today who have refused to learn how to drive because of fear. What if I capsize in a gutter? You have refused to learn. There are others who have refused to learn how to do a lot of things. God gave you opportunity to learn so many things. There's tailoring now, professional tailoring. Somebody from UK just came and said, I want to train you. I said, Guy, me, please, I don't want any insult. I've seen the way they insulted my madam. I, 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 I don't want headache. You are ready to fail. If you think like that, you are going to fail. In the name of Jesus, I release upon you the spirit of courage. Courage. You have to face life with courage. Brothers and sisters, wake up. Stop giving excuses and tell yourself, I refuse to fear. I refuse to fear. It is a risk to do everything in life. The only guarantee you have is the word of God. Get up and in the name of Jesus, take steps. Refuse to fear. Koinonia, I'm preaching to you. Refuse to fear. Refuse to fear. Refuse it. I know you carried over the course. Go back again with courage. Fear has kept a lot of people down. The Bible says, and to deliver them who through fear of death have all their lifetime be subject to bondage. To pray for a sick person, fear. You're already stretching your hands. You are looking and say, ah, I'm only in welfare department. So let me not disgrace myself here. Fear. Lastly, one of the biggest reasons why many people become failures. Ignorance of kingdom principles that guarantee a life of success and impact. Ignorance of kingdom principles. Ignorance. This is, in my opinion, the biggest reason. Ignorance of kingdom principles that guarantee a life of success and impact Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 it says this book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do all that is written you cannot observe what you do not know he said then not before not during then shall thou make thy ways prosperous and you shall have not any kind of success good success ignorance look at me i know we know that by now in koinonia that there are laws in the kingdom prosperity is not magic it's not a wish there are kingdom principles a life of influence you want to be a career of the glory and the power of god it's not a wish there are pathways to it you want to carry honor upon your life you can be blessed it doesn't mean you are honorable it says and jabez was more honorable honor is a law in the spirit there is what brings honor you can be rich and not have honor you can be anointed and not have honor when honor comes on your life, everybody knows that there is honor upon your life. Hallelujah. Longevity has a principle. Longevity. Influence has a principle. And he said in Matthew chapter 13 now, I think verse 11 or so, 
If I'm not mistaken, he said, it has been given unto you. Say, it has been given unto me. One more time, it has been given unto me to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Everybody say the mysteries of the kingdom. It is on the strength of those mysteries that you will enjoy dominion. It is on the strength of those mysteries that you will do great and mighty things in life. Nobody will just come and bless you for nothing. When during our series, The Mysteries of the Kingdom, I teach on the law of exchange. And I told you nothing goes for nothing. Nothing goes for nothing. There is an exchange that must happen. Hallelujah. Very important. These are some of the reasons why people become failures in life. And part of this is working in our lives, one or two or more, or for some of us, even all of them. We are going to challenge, challenge the gates of failure and say, in this season of the rain, I'm breaking out. No way. I won't remain like that. I won't park where my father parked and become a failure. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city of Papa. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city of Papa, He leads me Rise up on your feet and let's begin to pray. Bless the Lord for this word tonight. These are preparatory teachings for the series that is coming. I need to prepare us. I don't want to just waste the revelations that God has given me. Go ahead and prophesy. Lord, you are leading me. Day by day, I keep rising. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the confidence that I have in you. Whenever I call you, you will answer. This is the confidence that I have in you. Whenever I call you, you will answer me. This is my confidence, Lord. I'd like you to pray for your loved ones. Say, Lord, from here, let this unction lead to their homes. Make sure you are praying. Call them by name. Call them by name. They are not as anointed as you are. Standing for them. Call them by name. Call them by name. Say, Lord, for my sister. Call them by name. Your name must answer to them. Kata balata, rata parikata, leke borosotaya. Call them by name. Say, release an unction to my home. 
I release angels. Lord, as you are doing it here, do it there. As for me and my house, and my house. Pray for them. Lagos, Abuja, Maiduguri, Bauchi State, Yobe, Zamfara, Foki, wherever. Do a miracle, oh God. Do a miracle, oh God. I know you will do it. I know you will do it. Raise the dead. Change their status. Hallelujah. Now, hallelujah. There's someone that has been on my mind. Even while I was traveling back today, I was thinking about the person. He came all the way from, I think, Yobe, Sale. Where is he? Please come. The Lord will begin with you tonight. ushers position yourself inside and outside because there will be a rain in this place hallelujah listen you will be set free where did you come from from Bauchi. Yes. I want you to know that God will do a miracle in your life. Amen. You believe that? Yes, I believe. You came full of faith. Yes. The Lord will set you free right now Amen. by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus, that devil, come out of him right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, just breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. I set you free right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Now, listen. Listen. Please. I want to see those who have heart conditions. You came here. Hear me outside, please. We don't have time to waste. We are not going to have to mention cases individually. But when, when we call your case, please run out. We are going to pray and see as far as God wants to finish fast so that we will end quickly. Heart conditions. Leave your seat and come out here quickly. Either a hole in the heart or an abnormal heart formation. Quickly, quickly. Appreciate them as they line up here. Ushers coordinate them. Heart conditions. Please come and line up here quickly. That devil is a liar. Shataka paradabaladadaba. Heart condition. Growing up, they told you you have a heart condition. Come out and line up here. Come out and line up here. No matter how old you are or how young you are. Please line up. Line up. Straight line. Rakata baladabash. Line up, ushers, direct them, help them. Hallelujah. As you're standing here, I'd like you to wait by by to it. Because I know the unction of the spirit is here. God will set you free. Baba, God will set you free, sir. And everyone. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, sirs, we'll minister quickly. 
will just minister to them. Hallelujah. Praise God. I tell you, there is an unusual unction in this place. As hands are laid on you. Hallelujah. Return back thanking the Lord and check if you are still seated in the crowd and you know you have a heart condition. Don't sit back there. God wants to change your story. Hallelujah. There's someone who has an unusual palpitation. I don't know what it is. You, the way you, the way you breathe, sometimes is literally holding you and choking you. You are the one. Look at me, because it's a devil of darkness. Your own is not just sickness. Look at me. In the name of Jesus, I command that devil of darkness. Let her go. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let her go. 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 You are a devil of darkness. Come out. Come out. Come out of her now. Come out of her now. In the name of Jesus. Out of her. Come. My sister, you too. Come. Some of you that are standing. As hands are laid, you will find out that it wasn't sickness. My dear, God will set you free right now. Because your own is an oppression. Look at me. Are you, are you listening to me? There is a devil that has oppressed this girl. You will go. 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 Go in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Greater than any other name. Something is leaving you. I'm seeing a dark object coming out of you. Come out of her now. Sister, look at me. I'll pray for you. God will set you free. You believe that? Now, thou foul devil, let this girl go now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Go! 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 Let her go in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I say, you won't hide. Come on, I see you in the spirit. Go out of her in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. John please. Minister Jakes, Bishop, let's begin to, as they lay hands, they will speak to your life. Don't just think they are laying hands. Hallelujah. Please stand. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. As hands are laid, begin to pray while you're standing. Out of him now. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed now. I curse that devil of darkness. Go. 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 Be healed in the name of Jesus. Come out of her now. Come out of her. Come out of her. Come out of her. Come out of her. You are a devil of darkness. Come out of her in the name of Jesus. Let him go. Let him go now. Let him go. Let him go. Go. Be healed. Sister, I cost that devil. Because I also see oppression in your sleep. That demon of darkness. Go in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus made whole right now be made whole oh god is not done with you god is not done with you be healed in the name of jesus as you go back to your seat check yourself be healed right now be healed right now be healed right now be healed right now in the name of jesus in the name of jesus in the name of Jesus. Come out of her now. Come out of her. Come out of her. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. Out of her right now. In the name of Jesus. What's wrong? Be made free right now. In the name of Jesus. Be free right now. In the name of Jesus. I'm 
Set free right now from every oppression. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, only outside, not inside. All of you outside, lift your hands. Not those inside, please, those inside. Lift your hands, those outside. At the count of three, I want you to shout the name Jesus. The fire of God will terminate the works of darkness. So many of you are under influences of the devil. Hallelujah. Only those outside. At the count of three, as you shout, the power of God comes upon you. One, two, three. Let the fire fall. I curse devils. I curse demons. Go, go, go. Bring them in, ushers. Go, go. Let the fire fall. Bring them in. Bring them in. The fire fall all across the building. Outside. All across. Fire is falling. Those outside. One more time. Those outside shout Jesus. in the same row outside the fire of God comes upon you now right now that oppression over your life two ladies sitting in the same row look at me we've not finished so we've not finished if it's possible if it's possible the ministers are going to separate themselves into three and walk across the crowd outside no devil will survive today brother I see a serpent not a man come out of him now out of him now a devil of darkness come out of him come out of him I see a snake not a man come out of him Come out of him. Come out of him. Fire upon you. 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 Fire upon 
I'm seeing a snake, not a human being. You see the way he's behaving? Look at what he's doing. The fire of the Holy Ghost upon you. Come out of him. In the name of Jesus. The fire of the Holy Ghost upon you. The fire of the Holy Ghost upon you. Leave him, leave him, go. Go, go, go. As you touch me, you touch fire. The fire of the Holy Ghost upon you. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Come out of him. He must be free. Come out of him. Come out of him now. Come out of him. 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 Come out of Come out of him now. Fire upon you. Fire upon you. Fire upon him. Out. 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 Look at, he's free. Look up. Look at this gentleman. Someone who came oppressed of the devil. Brother, you are free in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Pick him up. Stand up, my brother. Look at, see, he's even surprised. Look at. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, look at me. Look at me. Do you know when you came out here? Where were you? You came outside. Help me with the mic. What's your name? Samuel. Eh? Samuel. Where are you coming from? Danaka. Look at this guy. Outside, he doesn't even know that he's here. Look at him surprised, looking at everybody. The Lord perfect you and set you free. Where was the lady you were praying for? Pray, this lady. See, I see an old woman. That's what I'm seeing. Turn this lady. I see a very old woman. Come on now. Come out of her. Come out of her. You're not done. Come out of her. Come out now. She laid down as though it's done. You are not done. You are spiritual people here. Out of her now. Out of her by the power of the Holy Ghost. Come out of her right now. That foul devil. In Jesus' name. Leave her alone. She's free. Look at you. What's wrong with this woman? Who brought her? Please, if you brought someone, make sure you stand close to the person. Who brought mama? Who are you? Come. Well done. What's her name? Lydia. What's wrong with her? She has been bleeding for the past three years now. For the past three years. Look at She had she had what? Dislocation on her shoulder. She could Since not when? Carry Mama, she can she talk? Yes, I can. Mama, talk. how are you? I'm well. Well done, eh? What's the issue? Oh, this hand now is dislocated. Yes, it was since December last year. December? Uh, that I went to the toilet on my way coming back. Something you see? From my you, face always, like you always know the signature of Satan when you see it. I'm not so, teaching you to be demon conscious. I'm back, just I telling you that. Myself on the ground. You did what? I said on my way coming back. I found my on the way from the toilet. Yes. How old are you, Mama? I'm 51. 51. I found myself sitting on the ground. You not found yourself I, sitting on the ground. I, that, I don't know it, uh, it happened. Not that I fell down flat. So. And, okay, come. You are her daughter. Let, let her talk. I was taken to a students that is not stroke because immediately it happened. My left hand and left leg seized. Your left leg right now is not moving. 
No, it's smooth. What of your right hand? The what right, is wrong with that, it? No, nothing happened. It's only the left leg and the left hand that seized immediately. Then I was rushed to the hospital. So the bleeding will stop. No, and no, the case of the bleeding is different from. I was taken to the hospital that and it was cancer of the womb. Cancer of the womb? Yes. You still have it? Yes. It's going to go. This is what I'm so, saying. That it was not stroke, that it was partial stroke. It was what? Partial stroke. Partial stroke. Then, the following, I was in the hospital for two weeks. I, I, I told them, the doctor, that I want him to discharge me. I want to go for prayer. So I went to, for prayer in Nosarawa State. So, the, the following day, in, in the prayer house. It's I time for I you to go. Go, 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 go. Out of her now. Out of her now. Now in the name of Jesus. That devil. Out of her now. Fire on you. Fire on you. In the name of Jesus. Fire upon you. Go, 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 go. Sorry, Mama. So I moved my leg. So I went. Okay, what, what, is, what, okay, so what is wrong with you right now? What, what did no, you come with it's right the now? Of the womb. Cancer it's of the womb. Cancer of the womb. Bleeding. Then. Your hand. The hand. These are the two conditions. Now that I fell down flat, so I discovered that I have dislocation on my shoulder. So. Okay, it's all right. The hand has been fixed locally, but up to now I couldn't move the hand. But I will pray for you. Amen. I will pray for you. Yes. All right. Can you feel my hands? Can you feel my hands? Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. My God. Do wonders in this hand right now. In the name of Jesus. Perfect this hand. In the name of the Lord Jesus. That devil of darkness, your hold is taken from my hands. In the name of Jesus. 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 fingers yes. every pain go I command you to go you are of the spirit of darkness um, I challenge you try lifting it up lift both of your hands up try it just try lifting your hands up can you try lifting it up in the name of Jesus you feel pains you feel pains where yeah. your shoulder By the power of the Holy Spirit, begin to move it more. In the name of Jesus, begin to move it. Start moving it. Start moving it. Start moving it. Start moving it. In the name of Jesus, I curse that devil. I curse that devil. Can you wind your hand? Try and wind this hand. Just look at me. Look at me. out blood I'm seeing someone that coughs out blood you cough all the time you cough out blood please hurry up 
you cough out blood. Literally. Who is the person? Inside. Are they hearing me outside? Quickly, if you identify that person, let the person come. You cough out blood, literally. Come out. Please clear the way for them. at oppression. This is what I'm seeing. Come on now. Get out of her. Out of her now. Out of her now. Out of her in the name of Jesus. Out of her now. Out of her. Thou devil of darkness. I curse you by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Not only this lady but the members of her family have been oppressed. Lay your hands on her chest. In the name of Jesus, I curse that power of darkness. Be free. Totally. Now. In the name of Jesus. Since when? For the past two weeks. For the past two weeks. Have you gone to the hospital? Can I pray for you? You believe Jesus will lay your hands on your chest. You will feel a fiery sensation upon your chest right now. Now you hear my voice. Let her go. Go! Go! Hallelujah. Those of you inside, lift your hands. I'm going to ask the cymbal to clash and the string play. Listen, when that happens, the fire of the spirit will move across anyone here under any oppression of darkness you must go this is not a negotiation hallelujah lift your hands at the count of three begin to clash the cymbal one two three Hashatabata. go 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 Go, 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 Satan be exposed. Satan be exposed. For this purpose was the Son of God. Satan be exposed. Light shine. I release fire. 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 Upon this congregation. Fire. 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 Fire upon you. Fire. Bring them out. Bring them out. Fire. 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 You can't stand it. No devil can stand it. Fire. Bring them out. Bring them out. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Shut up, 
The fire is burning. The fire is burning. You can't stand it. Satan, go, go. It's time for God's people to go. It's time for destinies to be open. It's time for what has made you to cry to end. Bring them out. Hey, I see you in the spirit. Leave her. Leave her. Go. 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 I see you in the spirit. Out of her. Out of her. Out of her. Out of her. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are free in Jesus' name. Bring me a mic. I do these things to teach you a lesson. Madam, stand up. No, 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 not her. Not her. You are a devil of darkness. For how do you think you can hide in the presence of God's light? Look at me. Bring the mic for me. You are not gone completely, oh. You are a devil of darkness. Out of her now. On your mark, get set, go. Go, 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 go. Out of her. Come out of her now. Come out of her now. Come out of her now. Fire upon you. Fire upon you. Fire upon you. As you touch me, you touch fire. As you touch me, you touch the fire of the spirit. He make it this out of her now. Out, 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 out. Come out of her now. She's free. Of Jesus, Madam, it will not stand fire from my hands to your head. If I be a servant of God, you stand around fire in the name of Jesus. Come out of her. This woman's destiny has been tied down. Lord, who is the person? Let the fire of God catch up with the person right now. God shows me this room. There's one person. With my hands. Let the fire of the spirit separate that person. Now! 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 Stand up, madam. Don't feel embarrassed. Calm down. Hallelujah. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. I want you to look at me. Look at my eyes. Look at my eyes. See, this woman has suffered. You just see someone walking. Things are not going right. 
people speak all kinds of grammar and Satan is advancing mama please come Jangfa is going to speak to you I sense please mama you're free Take her outside. I see her coughing, whatever. Please take her outside for God's sake so we don't litter this place. Take her outside. I don't know if it's poison or whatever it is that she took. Take her outside. You're still not out. Go out, go out, go out now. Out, go out. Go out in the name of Jesus. Go out of her. Go out of her. Come, place your hand on this lady's chest. Out of her. Come out of her now. I release fire upon you. Foul devil. Out of her. Patata tata da kapa. Rakata posa tali. Rekete kete kete. Le gronto zopo rotata. Riata la kosiaba. All right, your reign in this life is over. On your mark, set, go, 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 you can't stand it, go, go, go. I prophesy to you today after today your life will begin to move as if satan does not exist Amen. are you listening to me every oppression those outside hear me every oppression challenging your family through the greatness of the power that is in the name of Jesus, that challenge will bow. Don't let her go. Bring her back. Come, sweetheart. Look at me. Just look at me. Look at my eyes. Look at my eyes. Just keep looking. Look at my eyes. Look at my eyes. I'm seeing your father's face on your face. Look at my eyes. Just look. For she will go free. The children shall not suffer the iniquity of their fathers. Right now, you and the spirit of death upon her get lost get lost get lost get lost Up your heads, O oh ye gates. Be ye lifted, O oh ye ancient doors. And the King of Glory will come in. In Jesus' name. You're free. Come, Mama. Bring that lady who is falling. See, tonight, many of you, you will go back rejoicing. He who has the Son.
Lay your hands on her stomach. Out. 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 In the name of Jesus. What is it? Cancer. Who said so? The doctors. Lay your hands there. Lay. Kisan. Interpreter. Selina. Where is she? She's walking. Tell her Jesus. Okay. Okay. Tell her Jesus Christ is going to heal her right now. See, she's crying. See. Tell her Jesus will heal her now. Is she looking at you? Look at her. Tell her, Mama, Jesus will heal you. Look at, look at, look at this. 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 This is somebody's mother. This is somebody's mother. of you outside, I want you to know that Jesus is in this place. There is someone I need in this room. The devil has oppressed them. And the Holy Ghost spoke to me. He said, come out. Two of you, all of you in this room, lift your hands. That devil is a liar. As I, I shout the name of Jesus, the fire of God will come. People, please let me in the mighty name of Jesus. I release fire right now. My father, locate those two people right now in the name of Jesus. Let the fire of God fall, fall, fall. Two of them, two of them. There's one already, two of them. Fall. Shatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatat
In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of you are not done. Out, out, out until he's completely free. Out. Little girl, be free. I separate you with this spirit. Go. 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 Time up. Time up. This lady is heavily oppressed. Out of her. Out devil of darkness. You came for koinonia. You're welcome. Out of her in the name of Jesus. Stand up. Pick him up. Fire on you right now. It's time. It's time. It's time. You must go. Go. Bring him. You must go. This lady has been so tight. Now, listen. I need to explain something to you. Please follow me. It's not the people. Listen. It doesn't mean they are possessed with demons. Are you listening to me? So get that clear so that you don't carry your big mouth and start talking stories around. There are three levels of manifestation of Satan. Some of them are acutely possessed with demons. Some of them, devils influence their lives and destinies. So the fact that they are manifesting like they are possessed does not mean they are possessed. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's why they don't even know. Pick him up. Kai, this guy has been so oppressed of the devil. This lady has dreams and she meets with people. Go out of her. Go out of her. Just let him, let him lie down when he's ready to stand up. This guy is so weak. He doesn't even know that he has been under all kinds of bondages of Satan. Who prayed? Let me pray for you. Mama, you believe Jesus has authority over cancer? You do? Because he's going to go. Oh yes, it will go. Hmm? Lay your hands there. See, I, I'm touching it. It's looking like a stone. Out of her! Out of her! Out of her! Devil of darkness. It's not cancer. It's a spirit. Go out of her now. Go out of her now. Go out of her now. As the sun has eternal life. Hallelujah. Mama, who brought Mama out? Eh? I said, Who is Grace? Oh, I was actually talking about some. Bring the man on the wheelchair and on crutches. Let him come and stand here. Please, if we have not called your case, don't just come out. We'll give room for that. But let him stand. Sir, please, can you come and minister to this woman for time's sake? Bring him here. Sir, you're welcome. Look at me. What's wrong with you? Accident. On which leg? This leg. What's wrong with the leg? Operation. Operation. They did surgery. And it's not working. You want to walk? Yes. You believe Jesus will set you yes. free? Clear the way for him. He was the son. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Look at me. You believe in Jesus Christ? Can you walk without with it? Are you feeling pains? Yes. Right Where? Right what of this leg? Look at me. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Amen. I set you free. Amen. I command your leg to straighten out. In the name of Jesus Christ. Look at me. Walk. Come, follow me. 
Follow me. Can you walk? Try it. Just take a step and see. What's wrong with the legs? It's heavy. Ah, where? But can you bend it like this? Try and bend it. Go ahead. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Could you do this before? Could you do this before? God is healing you. Keep moving it. Move it. Move it. You just do what I'm telling you to do. Move it. Move it. Now move it like this. Move it like this. Move it like this. Move it like this. Can we try and walk now? Hold this one. Hold my hands. Walk. Let's walk. Let's walk. Let's walk. Try and match it down. Is it because of the metal? There's a metal inside his leg. So it's limiting him from walking. Hallelujah. So they must remove the metal. They can't, oh, they put it here permanently. Lord, let this metal become his bones. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. This metal Amen. Melt away. Amen. move across the crowd. We don't have time. Go ahead. Okay, Jamfa is already ministering. Some people outside just move and minister to people. Join them, Kenny. Someone should take on this role. Vivian. I'm hearing the name Vivian. Pastor, sir. Yes. Vivian. Who is Vivian. A fair lady called Vivian. No, no, a fair lady called Vivian. The Lord is showing me a fair lady called Vivian. Vivian. Sister, stand up. Look at me. Look at my eyes. Look at my eyes. Look at my eyes. Look at my eyes. Thou foul devil. Go! 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 In Jesus' name, be set free. Leave her alone. Vivian. What's wrong with you? Eh? People come to you and oppress you in a dream. Is that correct? Do you know me? Have, you, have I talked with you before? You want to be free? You'll be free right now. John, it's time for you to enter God's plan and purpose for your life. Are you listening to me? Because you are not supposed to be a photographer. Are you listening to me? You are supposed to have gone far beyond this level. God didn't just bring you to Koinonia to snap. Please take the, photo, the camera. Victor can snap, so we're doing it in the interim. You believe what I'm telling you? Uh -huh, because I see that how many people drink in your family? Tell the truth and shame the devil. How many? Two people, sir. You and who? I don't drink, sir. Again, yes, sir. you used to drink. Yes, sir. Have you stopped yes, sir. completely? Yes, sir. Praise God. But the Lord will set you free. Hmm? Because in your family, women. Uh -uh. You believe that? Yes, eh? See, let me tell you the truth. This is not your destiny in Christ. This happened as a result of frustration. Is that correct? Many things. School didn't work. Many things happened. Even Waiek, you don't even have your complete result. Is that true? Help me. Is that true? That's true? God will set you free. Hallelujah. You believe that? I want to speak into your destiny. 
and call it forth into where God wants it to be. That devil is a liar. Come out of him now. Come out of him. I release your glorious destiny. The days of oppression are over. Rise up beyond the photographer. Become the leader and the entrepreneur that God has destined for you to be. See, listen. It's not that this guy is lazy. I hope you know that. It's not that he's lazy. Ella, come. Abigail, come. Wumi, come. Three of you, come and stand here. For the sake of your families, the time has come. Out of her. Come out of her now. Come out of her in the name of Jesus. A devil of darkness. Out now. Now. Shatata rata. Reketele mo subariata. Brento capriata laka. Rakata baba baba baba. Out. Out. Fire upon you. Setele ke pariata. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Fire. 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 Be set free. Right now in the name of Jesus. You have a glorious destiny. No devil will hold you down. In the name of Jesus. Lawful captives be free. I release you. That devil of temper and anger. Go. Go. I command you be free. The plague of death over your family. Go. 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 I, come in, I command that terminal disease. Now it's time. Time up. Time up. You are a devil. Go in the name of Jesus. Be free. Fire upon you. Fire upon you. Fire upon you. That devil cannot stand. Fire upon you. It's time to be free. Time to be free. Time to be free. Leave her. Let her go. This lady has suffered too long. You've held her destiny down. Go in the name of Jesus. Once again, come. I stopped praying for you for a reason. Please take this guy up, this gentleman. Look at me. See? Comments. Do you know that your life, listen, listen. I saw upon this guy the spirit of Cain. And I didn't know what it was. He was lying down there. That was why I walked there and laid my hands upon him. You know the curse that was upon Cain? Bring them out. God is not done with them yet. You know the curse that was upon Cain? He said he won't die, but he will be a wanderer. This is how this guy's life has been. Today you are in Lagos. Tomorrow you are here. Next tomorrow you are this. It's time for your freedom. Free you. He was the son, has the time. My dear, come and stand here. Yes. Come and stand here. Birthday girl, you are the one who celebrated your birthday yesterday. We are going to pray and minister to people. The ministers are, sir, you, you are done? Ah, please pray, oh. Please, take time and speak into their lives. I beg you. These people came to receive. Ministers, go around, please. Prophesy to them. Where's Jamfa? Jakes, please. Please move around. Where are the people I called out now? My dear, you know, the devil wants to make your life a waste. So you are moving, but you are not accomplishing anything. But the Lord loves you. And tonight, the eye of the Lord is upon you. Hallelujah. You believe that? Hold my hands. 
both of your hands. Look at me. Just look at me. Lord, let this lady be free from every oppression of darkness. In the name of Jesus, be free. I set you free by the power of the Holy Ghost. Look at me. I'm seeing you pregnant. Drive every useless man out of your life. Are you listening to me? I'm not saying you are pregnant now. I'm saying I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit, not physically. Hallelujah. Praise God. So don't, please, kick any man who wants to come and talk grammar around you. Because I'm seeing that you are going to three countries. Number one, South Africa. Huh? Number two, UK. Number three, Canada. These three countries. The Lord is taking you there. Hold on. But then I see a lot of resistance rising up from wherever. I may not be able to talk all this with you because we're in the presence of people. But I want to pray for you. It's time. See, three things will happen. One, a passion for God you cannot recover from. The ministers are ministering to people around. While they are that devil, let me tell you, cast out every devil, prophesy, release people to their prophetic destinies. Let her go. Go! Go! Time up, thou devil of darkness. Be free now. Be free now. I command that wicked spirit. Depart from your life. Fire right now all over your body. I release the fire of the Holy Ghost. All over you. Right now. Leave her, let her go. For she shall not be called Jabez. That's what the Lord says I should say. Because you were born in sorrow, you will not be called Jabez. Tonight, I enlarge your coast in the spirit. My dear, look at me. From today, you will walk into your prophetic destiny. See, you don't know what it is that has happened to you now. Even you, you cannot answer. But look at me. You are a very good girl. Are you listening to me? But you are assuming the character of another person. Tonight, the Lord sets you free. This lady is a wonderful lady beyond your imagination. But sometimes, you see her doing things that even her does not know. Because I see the spirit of anger and rage. I mean rage almost to kill somebody. But the Lord sets you free. And this is what I'm seeing in the spirit. I'm seeing you move from the side and you are climbing a ladder and the Lord says restore. This is what I prophesy. Restore. This is what will begin to happen to you. Restore. Hallelujah. If I Ifai, hearing the name Ifai, Ifai, who is Ifai? Ifai, now, if you brought someone for healing from outside Zaria, quickly bring them from, quickly, we have to round up, quickly, please bring them. If you invited someone, no matter how far you are outside, bring the person, sir, come. It's time for the Lord to set you free. Not only in your health, but on every area of your life. You believe that? Hmm. Hold my hands. Both of your hands. All right now, I speak to you. I open up that door. I challenge the works of darkness. Go! By the fire of the Holy Ghost. One, two, three. The Lord perfects you. Who brought this man? What's wrong with you? 
bring them forward. He has what? His sight. He used to be bigger than this. But what happened? Because I'm seeing something like a rock upon his head. Who is Silvanus? Sir, does he drink? Who is your friend that drinks? He's drinking. You need to get him born again and serious with God. Right? I want to pray for you right now. Your weight will come back. Your life will be restored. And your eyes, you will begin to see clearly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stephanus. Silvanus. From where? From, From where? Heindogo. Eh? Heindogo. I-A-U. Heindogo. Ah, okay. You are born again. You love Jesus Christ. But you won't do ministry the way you are planning. You will start afresh with God. Alright? So disable all those man of God things. You will start afresh. Primary one, two, three, four, five. God will anoint you. Right? I'm going to pray for you. You believe what I'm saying. And leave all your friends who are deceiving you. Huh? You are going to be a great man, but you are not yet that man. So you will stay in the school of the spirit. Hmm? These teachings that you people jump and pride over, they are basic things in the spirit. Let God work with you. From today, you begin a new journey. Hold my hands. Lord, put a fire upon him. Right now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, a new beginning, fresh start. Just breathe in and out. As deep as you can. In and out. Baba, be free. Be free in the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of Jesus. Now, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Who brought him? He came on his own. What's wrong with you? Migraine. Put your hands on your head. Lay it. But he will first set you free. Then you will begin a walk with him. Any appetite and anything that does not belong to him will give way. You will be surprised what you will begin to do in your life. Okay? Look at me. What am I doing? One leg in. Where is the other leg? Why? Because this is how your life is. It's time for you to love him with every passion. Hmm? So I break everything that is not of God in the realm of the spirit. Let the fire of God take over. Take over your life. Take over her life. Foul spirit, let her go. Lord, anoint her and use her. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, Please do it quickly. Someone help her. Lift up your hands. I look to you.
I saw the sun rising over your family. And then I heard this song. I will wait for you. Jesus. You're the sun in my The days of oppression are over. You are standing on behalf of your family. Something is happening to your father right where I'm holding. The Lord is setting him free. Today the Lord is giving you the mantle that was upon your mother. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Because as I look at you I see her face. And the Lord says I should tell you to run with the spirit of power. Whatever you decree will happen. The Lord will establish you and you will be a mother indeed. That all your times of tears will be taken away by a new joy. Take this message to your father. For the Lord visits your family tonight. around pastor williams is here just the ministers are ministering let them continue but those that are around even if it's just me and pastor williams please let's pray on the request after we pray on the request i'm going to begin to move prophetically and speak this is the time you will receive are you listening to me stretch your hands towards this prayer request and begin to pray in tongues Bishop. your hands shabala barado krasta barabala rata kata prata kata balada bash paroka prande pradeshita do miracles oh god mare kata balada bash solve every problem here oh god and for all our facebook twitter Egyptians, you see them no more. These 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 Egyptians. You are conquered. Whatever is conquered here is conquered. All over this country and around the world, we release testimonies, miracles in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord, by your spirit, Lord, by your hand, Lord, by your spirit, Lord, by your great power, let there be miracles on this request. Miracles, supernatural miracles, terminate sicknesses, terminate diseases, never to return. Creative miracles in the name of Jesus. All oh, supernatural jobs, supernatural wisdom, let it be done by your spirit. Miracles by your spirit. Supernatural miracles by your spirit. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name. I found a reason why I sing. I found a reason why I sing. I found a reason why I sing. I found a reason. Lift your hands. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands.
I want you to receive every prophetic word because the creative power of God is going to swing into motion. The creative and prophetic power. Lift your hands. As I pray, I'd like you to shout a loud amen with your spirit. Hallelujah. Right now. Doors of delay. I command you. Be open in the name of Jesus. Delay. Be gone. Delay. Be gone. Delay. Delay in marriage. Delay in jobs. I cause it to its root. I release you in the name of Jesus. Every academic bondage. Every academic bondage. Kateka leko sopa. Repete latu sabati adaka. In the name of Jesus. Be free. Be free. Be free. Mental blockage. Be free from it. Academic bondage. I set you free. This is the best exam you would have ever written in your institutions of learning. I prophesy it by the power of the highest. I call this session for you a season of seven-fold restoration. Seven-fold restoration. Seven-fold. Seven-fold. Not one-fold. Not two-fold. I speak it. Where you have been victimized, any student here who has been victimized right now, whether it is project or service year or whatever, I change it in the realm of the spirit. Any one of your loved ones that has no job between today and the middle of April, I command fearful supernatural joy in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus every womb called Barry I don't care whether the womb has been removed or not right now in nine months time you will celebrate miracle children. Be open. Every barren womb. Be open. Hallelujah. Every plague of death over your life or your family members. Make sure you are lifting your hands up. Every plague of death by the blood that speaketh better things because I see miscarriages that the devil wants to bring to many families. I see miscarriage of children. Every plague of death, I command it to pass over you forever. In the name of Jesus. He said, because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness, Therefore, God, even thy God, has anointed you with a type of oil called the oil of gladness that sets you above your fellows. The anointing that brings you above. I call you in the realm of the spirit. Rise up in the name of Jesus. Rise up. A new level of prosperity. 
a new level of lifting a new level of wisdom and Jesus grew in wisdom in stature and in favor with God and with men as surely as the Lord God of Israel lives let a cloak of favor hit you where you are favor 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 every terminal disease in this place HIV cancer in the name of Jesus we terminate it once and for all be free in the name of Jesus be free in the name of Jesus SS AS we change your genotype in the realm of the spirit in the name of Jesus every demonic oppression that is responsible for where you are and where your family is tonight it is time for the new anointing guard up your loins and be ready every yoke of bondage surely must be broken I command every captivity over your family by the shed blood of Jesus Christ captivity ends in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I'm standing in the spirit before a gate and the Lord is telling me let God's people walk to it and move forward in their life I command you by the spirit and according to the vision of the Lord to me move forward go forward no more stagnation in ministry enter your place of anointing enter your place of rest enter it I place you inside it I take you into the mantle of your life the prophetic oil of your life I release it move forward go forward in the name of Jesus Christ and I speak to you every Egyptian you see today you are the one who knows the Egyptian so lift your hands with faith in your spirit everything called an Egyptian as surely as the Lord God of Israel lives once and for all bye bye to them forever bye bye to them forever in your family bye bye to them bye bye to them I release signs wonders I release miracles take it take it take it take it from the depth of my heart according to the order of grace take your miracle take your miracle take your miracle everything your hand touches from today in the name that is above all names I command it to multiply my brother stand here bring this lady come this is what I'm demonstrating to you what I saw in the spirit that God is connecting you to the people who will take you to the next level of your life. 
May the Lord take you where your gift will be needed. May the Lord take you where your gift. I command demand upon your oil. Demand. Prophetic demand. Rekotosata. Marekete. Retoria. Mabratadi. Ekregete. I command every uncompleted family project every uncompleted family project the Lord shows me the number 21 in the realm of the spirit and I pray that between now and the next 21 days I command angels of help I release it to your families. Receive it. Receive it. Help. Help is coming. Zion's help. The helper of Zion. Move across families. Move across families. I tell you as surely as the Lord lives. Between today and the next 21 days. You will see fearful testimonies by the hand of God. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I impart spiritual gift upon you. At the count of seven, let fresh fire fall upon everybody. Every one, two, Three, my God, do it. I see angels. Four, five, six. There it is. Come on. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Outside. Take it. Take it. Take it. In the name of Jesus. Take it. Take it. Take it. Fire. The prophetic. The apostolic. The evangelistic. Teaching mantles. Pastoral graces. Leadership. Entrepreneurship. I fire it into your spirit. Everywhere you have been deserted so that no man goes through you. I call you an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. In the name of the Lord Jesus, doors be open. Breakthrough. Breakthrough. Many of you don't know what breakthrough is. You just receive it. Breakthrough. I release it. Breakthrough. I release it. Breakthrough. I release it breakthrough. An angel stands in this row. Take it breakthrough. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Right to the back. Take it. Take it. the Lord gives you a new name whatever you came here for whatever request you brought I command go back with a testimony go back with a complete testimony whatever you came here with go back with a testimony in the name of Jesus. And every one of you who came from far and near to catch a fire and catch an anointing, go back with that fire. 
Go back and reproduce these things. And even greater. Receive it. Receive it. Now, listen. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish. Listen to me, everybody, inside and outside. You're here and you've been struggling with your life. The Lord has been speaking to you. You know that now is the time to make it right with the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, Whosoever will come to me, I will in no wise cast away. He said, Come unto me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Hallelujah. You've never made this decision for the Lord Jesus Christ. Especially many of you outside. Tonight is your night. Jesus is calling you. Jesus is saying, How long? Will you run away when I have a better life for you? When I can save you from eternal condemnation and lead you to the path of grace? Or you've given your heart to the Lord, but you found yourself derailing. Please, as you hear my voice, do not harden your heart. Hallelujah. At the count of three, inside and outside, I want you to leave your seat and rush out here. The Lord is calling you. You've not given your heart to the Lord. Leave your seat. They are coming. Appreciate them. Right now, leave your seat. Come right to the front. Clap for them. They are coming. Thank you, Jesus. You need to make it right with the Lord. Come out. Or you've been born again once, but you've derailed. Don't stay outside. No matter how far you are, find your way to the front. Forget about your friend. Please run quick. Quick, quick, do it fast. Keep clapping, Koinonia. Thank you, Lord, for a harvest. Don't sit back. There are still more people outside. The Holy Ghost is speaking to you. Don't wrestle with him. Sister, brother, the time has come. There are still more people I see outside. Keep coming. We'll wait for you for one minute. Keep coming. No matter what you've done, there is a fresh start. Celebrate them. The devil is a liar. He will not hold you back. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Hallelujah. Keep coming. Keep coming. You are welcome. Keep coming. Hallelujah. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for making this decision. Hallelujah. I like to pray for you. I like to lead you to Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter how far and how long you have gone. The Lord can give you a new start tonight. Are you listening to me? The Lord can give you a new start tonight. No matter how far you have gone. No matter how far you have gone. No matter how far you have gone. Lift your right hand to heaven and say after me, Lord Jesus, mean it from your heart. This is not a Bible recitation. Lord Jesus, I come before you acknowledging you as my Savior. I believe you died for me. I believe you rose again for me. Today, I receive the gift of salvation. Come into my heart. Give me a new start. In the name of Jesus. I denounce sin. I denounce Satan. Make me a new person. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. From today. Forward ever. Backward never. The things I used to do. I'll do them no more. Because Jesus is Lord. Of my life. Father. Father commend these ones to you. They have come out to make a genuine decision because they love you and they acknowledge you. My God, I pray that their salvation be genuine. 
And I pray that from today, you begin a walk in their lives. I command that you are free from every challenge you used to go through. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let peace return to your heart. Holy Spirit, I commend you to these ones. This is the assignment you have given on earth. I pray that you do great things in their life. In the name of Jesus. My brother, you are the one who drove me one time. The Lord will begin to do great things in your life and even in your family for this great decision you have made. In the name of Jesus. Appreciate them in Jesus' name. Now, in one minute, I'd like you to follow the elder. I said the elders. Follow the ushers. Hallelujah. And they'll be able to have your details and will follow you up. When, sir? Jakes. Monday. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, what time? Tomorrow, 7 p.m. on the dot. Please be at chapel. Pastor Jakes will be following you up. We'll have foundational teachings that will bring to guide you and you'll be filled with the Holy Spirit. Ah, okay. The small ones, please. The very young ones, you're welcome. You can come by 4 p.m., all right? So that you're not roaming around 4 p.m. If you have to explain to your parents, please tell them you got born again. And if you need, if your parents want to talk to any of the ministers to confirm, no problem. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, follow the ushers. God bless you. Appreciate them. You're worshiping with us for the first time. This is your first time of attending this glorious meeting called Koinonia. I'd like you to leave your seat and jump out quickly. Quickly. Appreciate them. Come on, Koinonia. There are many people outside. We celebrate you. Come on. Koinonia celebrates you. Give them a big welcome. If there's anybody sitting close to you who is coming for the first time, ask the person to come out. We have a blessing for you. Keep clapping. Wow. Keep clapping. They are coming. Please hurry up. Hurry up. Make way for them. Ushers, direct them. Thank you. Keep coming. Thank you, mommy. Keep coming. Keep coming. There's still space for you. There's still space. We acknowledge you and we want to tell you thank you for coming. Hallelujah. This is Koinonia. Put together by Eternity Network International. We thank God for what he's doing in our midst. How many of you were blessed tonight? I assure you, you will never be the same. You will go back and meet fearful testimonies. I assure you, you will know you met God tonight. In the name of Jesus. Thank you so much for coming. We love you. We truly celebrate you for making our time and the sacrifice to come here. Hallelujah. We're here every Friday building the word and helping us to understand the Holy Spirit and walk in partnership with him. We want to pray for you and prophesy upon you. Saints of God, stretch your hands upon them. Listen, we are anointed. So if we pray for you, believe it, it will happen in your life. Father, we pray that you bless them. Anoint everyone. May the Lord give you a testimony that will confirm that you met God tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord give you a testimony. Come out of her now. Out. Now. Out of her. Come out of her. Your testimony starts. Come out. Out of her now. now. Devil, come on. Out. Out of her. Come out of her. Out. 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 You have oppressed her for too long. She came for koinonia. Thou devil of darkness. Alright, your time is up. Go. Now. Fire upon you. Fire upon you. That demon of lust, leave her. Now. Now. In Jesus' name.
Balatosa Pratana. You're free. In Jesus' name. Pick her up. Sister, you have received a visitation from the Lord. For you would have gone back with the same problems you carried and brought here. But the Lord has visited you tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. And for every one of you, don't you think we are playing when we are praying for you? We truly pray that you will go back with a testimony and an experience. That the things you used to do that are not consistent with the Lord, you will do them no more. Every bad relationship you came here with, we break it. You will go back, you won't find the other people again. In the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord connect you to destiny help us. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And every bondage of Satan, we set you free from it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you so much. I'd like you to quickly follow the ushers. They will have your details and we'll pray for you and follow you up. We are here every Friday. The Lord bless you. Keep coming and invite others in Jesus' name. Celebrate them and appreciate them as they go back. Let's take the following announcements very quickly and we're out of here. Presbio Consults Nigeria presents the Real Entrepreneurs Forum. Hallelujah. How to start and grow your business, how to raise capital, why most entrepreneurs fail, and so on and so forth. This is a business meeting. The facilitators are Mr. Femi Bolaji, the CEO of Intac Pharmaceuticals, Mr. Francis Yusuf, CEO Real Eagle Springs, and Mr. Victor Mataya, CEO Aspire Network. The date is tomorrow, 23rd of February. Saturday time is 9 p.m. The venue is Vet Multipurpose Hall. Watch out for the posters and please be there tomorrow, 9 a.m. in the morning. Hallelujah. This was put together by one of us. Please honor him and get blessed. Hallelujah. We are proud of this. Hallelujah. I think this is Isaac, right? That's Isaac. Hallelujah. We are proud to dedicate our new envelopes for mission and our school of ministry. Are you happy about that? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We've made envelopes for our school of ministry and we've made envelopes for missions. So from today, anytime you're coming for Koinonia, hallelujah, as the Lord blesses you and as the Lord grants you grace, come prepared not only to give your offering but we'll drop the envelopes. You may not need to make any special call. You have your seed, whatever, from this night to sow into the school of ministry. These are arms of ENI. Hallelujah. The school of ministry is directed by Bishop Stan and the missions is directed by Jakes. Hallelujah, Pastor Jakes. So I'd like you to be part of what God is doing. Hallelujah. So every time you come from next week, inside and outside, we'll just drop the envelopes. You have your tithe, offering, and then appropriately just put in your seeds there and we'll pray on it and speak into your life. I want to assure you that this house is fruitful ground. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, we are faithful with every money that comes and we use it for the reason why it was given. We dedicate this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for what you are doing in this house. We pray that everyone who will give for our school of ministry to raise and to train our students and to train generals in the spirit, my God, I pray that you will cause them to flourish and enjoy your blessings in the name of Jesus. And we pray for our mission, oh God. As we visit hospitals, prisons, police centers, mission fields. And we supply welfare to many people. My God, I pray that whoever partners with this project will experience an open heavens. We dedicate this. It will only be used for the glory of the king. No man will be glorified but Jesus alone. We dedicate it in Jesus' name. God bless you. Hallelujah. From after the service, if you feel God is leading you the, env the envelope, don't go with them, please. You just come and we'll place them there and then you just drop your seed. House on the Rock Foundation, 
Zaria presents Tehila Africa. A crazy African praise. The date is 28 February. Time is 10.30 p.m. Venue is Charity and Faith Missions. Ministering will be Steve Strings and many more. Dress code strictly traditional. Hallelujah. This is announcement from our School of Ministry. The closing date for the submission of the forms for ENI School of Ministry is next week Friday. Please listen carefully. Next week Friday will be closing for all the prospective students. And now the director has instructed that um, the fact that you have the form does not mean you, you are automatically a student. Hallelujah. And he said, you hold on with the school fees. We are going to go through um, a screening process and then we'll place the list. Am I right, sir? Bishop? Am I correct? Okay. Um, by the grace of God, the Lord has granted us grace to secure a venue. We'll be using God's time for our school of ministry. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He granted it unto us free of charge. Absolutely free. Hallelujah. We thank God for it. Learn to celebrate what God is doing in the house. So please, the first of March, are there still forms? Okay, well, there are still forms. I understand that there are some of you, especially those who are from Kano and Mina. You can meet Bishop afterwards and you get it. And I know there was a pastor that told me he will be around. Please wait and collect it for yourself. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.